Uh, it should say right on the inside. You should see a little L or a little R on one of the inside, on both of the inside. You see it? Go the links to your phone right there.
I see. Yeah, I see what's happening. Okay, I got it. Should have been dead a long time ago. Should have been dead a long time ago. So I will always worship you. I need to hear y'all sing this to him. Say, here's my word. music sing like you know Jesus can hear you here's my all of my life you've been so good God. receive my all of all of my one more here it is here's my Father, receive, receive my all, all of my worship. Come on now, break those alabaster boxes. Come on, come on, break those alabaster boxes. Come on, come on. We're not saving anything for the next service. We're not saving anything for the next worship experience. But come on, break those alabaster boxes. Come on, pour, pour, pour. We got more. one more minute. Just pour. Pour, 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 pour it on the feet of Jesus. We give you all the glory. Come on, pour, pour, pour. We give you all the Tasted and seen that you are good. Lift those hands. We give you all the
right, God bless you, everyone. Welcome in. Let us get started. Welcome to the house of the Lord here at Altar Worship Center. God bless you all. Come on in. Let's share. Let's share. Let's comment and let's engage. Do all of the things. We are here. We are live and we are ready for a phenomenal word in the Lord on tonight. Uh, the message on Sunday that was preached by our very own apostle. We'll continue in that tonight. So come on in and gather around. I see many of you are joining already. So God bless you. Thank you so much for doing so. And uh, let us get ready for what it is God is getting ready to do. I'll come back around and do a few shout outs to everybody that has joined us so far. And then uh, we'll get started because uh, I do have apostle on deck. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we are ready to go unto the Lord God even more and even deeper in what he has already uh, sent us by way of the word. So if you will, go ahead and please hit that uh, share button, comment and engage with us on tonight as we get prepared uh, for this phenomenal night. Amen. So we're going to go into prayer and then we'll continue on with the rest. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Father, for your word, your kindness, your grace, your mercy, Father, that has been bestowed upon us, your people. Father, we thank you for being so kind, so gracious to us all, Father, to reestablish us, to restore us, to build us up even the more. And God, you sent the word on Sunday that challenges us, that God, that uh, speaks to us, God, that implements in us, God, growth today, Father, growth forever, growth for the life, Father, and to satisfy your will and to fulfill your will in us, to grow us up, God, into the men and women and the children of God that we are called to be. Father, we thank you God, that you have not withheld no good thing from us. And we thank you, Father, God, that you are still yet molding us, shaping us, God, dealing with us in the very desires, in the very, God, affections, Father, that are deep within us, Father. We thank you that you're turning the heart of those that are rebellious, Father. You're turning the minds of those that are doubting, God. You're turning the sickness to healing, Father. You're doing this by your miraculous ways and your power and your might. So, Father, we praise you for all that you have done is wonderful. All that you do is amazing, God. So, Father, we thank Thank you, God, on tonight. There will be another release and another breaking in the atmosphere on tonight, God. Let it be so that the blind begin to see, the deaf begin to God to hear, the dumb begin to speak, Father. Those that are withered begin to feel healing in their bodies, Father. Those that are tired find strength on today. God, those that feel least, Father, find themselves in the first position finally for the rest of their life. God, we thank you. God, that you will do miraculous and wonderful things, even in this word tonight. Let us gather, God, by the bunches and God, the, by the multitude to speak and to hear of you. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. All right, come on, people of God. Let us get in here on tonight and let us see what the Lord God is getting ready to do. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go ahead and see who's in with us on tonight. See, a bunch of you are in here early. So God bless you to my sister Ursula, who's here. God bless you to our brother Jason. Security is here. God bless you to our sister Dion. She is here. Hallelujah. Good. God bless you. Sister George is here. Nicole, God bless you. Of course, Pastor Sierra is here. God bless you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I see Sister Stephanie Barnes is here. Hallelujah. From DL Wells Ministries. God bless you. Who else do we have? Uh, our Sister Jewel. God bless you. Good to see you as well. Thank you for joining. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Prophetess Weddle is here. Good to see you, woman of God. God bless you as well. Minister Pat is here. Yes. Good to see you as well. DL Wells Ministries in the house. Sister Catania is here also. God bless. Good to see you. Thank you for joining. Our brother SB, also D.O. Wells, is coming in tonight. Hallelujah. To hear the word. Amen. That is being brought forth from our very own apostle. God bless you. D.O. Wells again. Mother Robinson is here. God bless. Amen. Who else is here? If you're popped in and I haven't seen you and I see your face, I'm going to shout you as well because you can't hide. Amen. It is meant for you to be here. God bless you. Overseer uh, Pastor Rashonda Wells is here. Amen. I see you. Our sister April, good to see you as well. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. Let's share. Let's share. Let's share. Make sure you share. Let me see who else is in here with us. Uh, who else is here? Kinsley, God bless. Amen. Kyle, God bless. Daisy, God bless. Good to see you. Welcome men. Welcome to the altar. Uh, of course, I see my sister Shantia is here. Atlanta, Georgia, and our brother Miguel is here. Amen. I believe that rounds out what I can see. So when you guys begin to engage and comment and share, 
I'll be able to get more of that. All right, we're not going to prolong this. Come on, everybody, let's get ready to receive the word of God on tonight. Of course, on Sunday morning, we heard a phenomenal word from our very own leader, Apostle, who brought the word. I'm, I just keep on growing and growing and growing. Could you write that in the comments? I just keep on growing. Come on, if you believe you're growing, if you believe you're going to grow, if you're ready for growth on tonight, come on, everybody, and let us praise the Lord God for our wonderful leader, our apostle, who is getting ready to facilitate even the more in this word. I just keep on growing. Can we praise God for our apostle, Apostle D.L. Wells, who is in the studio with us tonight. God bless you, Dad. Welcome in. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. We thank God for being here today, Pastor Corey. Yes, yes, we are here God and we you. are live together. It's been a while since we've done an in-person yes. together Bible study, yes. uh, but God bless. It's time to go a little bit deeper. Apostle, you brought forth a phenomenal word on Sunday which was I just keep on growing and growing and growing. And uh, I believe the people of God felt the need and the urgency of that message. And uh, we cannot wait to dive a little bit more. So people of God, let's greet the apostle in the comment section. Come on, let's greet him in heavenly and peace and hallelujah and the love of God within us. Come on, let's release that in the comments and let's get ready for this message of growth on tonight. And I want to tell you all, we made that part of our mantra um, I, I don't know. I don't know. About three or four years ago, Apostle, and we uh, made that our our thing at Altar Worship Center. This is the place of growth, development, and maturity. So, mm -hmm. for you to bring such a matter of word re uh, reinstitutes what our house and what Altar Worship Center is called to, and what we're going to be doing in the house of the Lord and in the kingdom. So, come on, everybody! I just keep on growing. Let's get into this message on tonight. So, Apostle, however you feel led, I'm gonna. Uh, step back here just for a moment and let you give some opening remarks and then we'll get into this well praise the lord for thank god for being here i tell you pastor i have been attacked amen by the enemy amen so much for this message uh that we have been ministering uh to you all um i when i was coming into the church hallelujah i actually fell amen going inside the office amen i missed the uh, the desk in the office by my, with concerning my head. Thank God for that. Um, the next day, uh, you, you know it's the trick of an enemy when the foot that you bent uh, is swell, is swell, had swollen just a little bit, uh, but the right foot was the one that gave me the problem the next day. So that's how you know it's a trick of the enemy. And then, of course, today the enemy attacked my body today, Amen. He does not want this message out. Let me tell you, he attacked it, Pastor Corey. I'm here at Pastor Corey's home with his wife and family. God bless Pastor Corey and Amen. Sierra. Amen. And I just came to really spend some time with my grandson, but couldn't do it because the enemy attacked my body. I was I went into a sleep mode and was completely knocked out. And I want to tell you, I went to bed very early last night. So I, I there was no problem in sleeping last night. I went to bed early. Uh, one of my sons, amen, were trying to reach me, and they, he was surprised that I was asleep so early. But uh, I know it was a trick of the enemy, amen, that uh, attacked my body. And believe it or not, God woke me up at 7.15 for this broadcast. <laughs> yes, he did. I was, gonna, I was debating, should I bother the apostle or let him rest? And I really uh, wanted to uh, uh, allow you to rest because you did seem... Uh, very tired, but I know the word of God just just jumped up in you and say, "Hold on, yeah, <laughs> it's I mean, time to get to the when, word." When I say the enemy attacked my body, it was terrible because, as I said, I um, have been, uh, and I'm, when I want to say it didn't happen until I came to, got to your studio. Yes, here. sir. It, it just I just kept being attacked and attacked and attacked, and your wife kept saying, "Are you okay, Dad?" I, I kept saying, "Yeah, I'm okay," but <laughs> I wasn't okay. That's yeah. that's a fact. Yeah. Um, but exactly 7.15, I, it, this surge of energy came and hit me, and I came out. Well, praise God. Looking for Corey. Corey, where you at? <laughs> <laughs> I was walking a dog with 10 minutes to go. He said, what time does Bible study start? I said, 10 minutes, sir. He said, well, let me get myself together. So I said, come on, let's do it. Uh, but I had already, I set up the studio in case he was ready. 
either way, uh, I knew it probably was going to happen, so I, I didn't want to bother him. But he woke up, and here we are. So let's praise God because he's here. Uh, we know Sunday was definitely an attack on Apostle, but yes. um, we are so grateful that you're all, all right and that the word was delivered and going to be delivered again. So people of God, please make sure you open your mind, your heart, your spirit to receive on tonight. Come on, cause all distractions to cease right now. Let us prepare before uh, the Lord now because we're getting ready to dive into some word, into some scripture that's getting ready to change your life. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. Let's go. So Apostle, wherever you want to take us tonight, you know, um, go ahead and um, and lead the way. You know, one of the things I thought about this Holy Spirit spoke with me concerning um, was the actual um, taking a minute, people of God, taking a minute to realize where you where you're at in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Where are you at in Christ Jesus at this moment at this time? Where are you? And uh, so a lot of us are complacent. We we we're so relaxed. We just so in a, in a, and we're in a position that um, we really, some of us don't know where we're at. Some, mm-hmm. some of us are confused. Amen. And so uh, this message, amen, got ministered to me to preach, minister to the people because uh, pastors are pastors of churches, apostles are apostles of, of the world. They're international people. Apostles take the message to the world. Amen. And uh, Jesus t- t- uh, gathered the disciples together and made them apostles to take the message to the world. Amen. Not just to that particular p- period of time, but we take take the message to the world. And and so I need you to help me share this message with as many people as you can. Get on the phone. Get off for a minute if you have to. Call some people up and tell them the enemy attacked the apostle so that we would not get this message on tonight because it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. And so um, if, if, you, if you just take a minute and just um, think about, you know, where you're at right now. Also, uh, Pastor Gloria, the Lord got me to the point where one time he said, you know, I talk to people. And when I talk to people, you know, I often think about the people, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, I listen to people. I see the people and they're talking. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to wonder why they saying that. You right. Know, uh, what made you say that? Uh, why are you saying that? Mm-hmm. How did you say that? Um, what you say that for? Right. You yeah. know. Um, and um, when you can sit back and listen to someone talk, mm-hmm. and the Holy Spirit kick in mm-hmm. and allow you uh, to take on a, a biblical reproach uh, or, 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 or take on a, a biblical, you know, uh, contents in your mouth or your conversation. And not address them in the matter of your flesh, right? You know, um, then you know you 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 know that he says I le- I leave unto you a comforter, right? Amen, right? And so uh, I I want to praise God, and I know you who you who are watching right now. I know you want to thank God too that you're able to amen keep growing and keep growing and growing, and now you are learning better how to handle things in life handle situations, how to uh, be in conversations with a group of people that may be attacking you or maybe attacking one of your family members, and now you know how to act. You know how to handle yourself. This message is very powerful, and we want you to share it with as many people as you can because we want to know and you want to know, that are you are you growing? Are you growing? Because if you're not growing, anybody can do church. People have been doing church for years. Yes, sir. But you are not growing. You're not, amen, you're not, you're not excelling. You're not succeeding. You're just in the same position you were in last year and the year before and the year before. And Pastor Corey, that's a problem. When people are in the same situation they were the year before, that's a problem. And the year before, that's a problem. Yes, sir. And so that's what the Lord is saying. Are you growing? Are you actually really growing in the gospel? Are you, re- are you just still uh, caught up in this religious act, going to church, paying your tithes and offerings, amen, coming home, you don't study the Bible, says study the show thyself approved, approved. Yep. a work that they need to not be ashamed and rightly divide the word. You're not studying at all. You, there's no prayer life. There's no worship. There's no praise. You're doing the same thing every Sunday, every month, every year, and you have not grown. Mm-hmm. There's no, have not been any growth. And you can tell Pastor Corey because their finances have not grown. Come on. You're still not married. Hello. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. You are still on the same job. You you know, you're still handling things the same way. Yeah. Your marriage is in an uproar. Yeah. Amen. I deal, Pastor Cor, with people, amen, so many, so, so many people all the time. I, li I literally just stare at them and, and, and say to myself, what are you talking about? You know, <laughs> I bet you, I know you do. Bible says, you know, and being gifted and a, as a prophet from come from the Lord, they are talking to me yeah. and I am experiencing a feedback, a spiritual feedback, Pastor Corey. Uh, so uh, while they're talking, something else is coming out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. There's demons, mm -hmm. uh, you know, spirits, you know, the truth. If they're telling a lie, the truth actually comes out their mouth, not the lie that they're telling. Yeah. Amen. So, um, this message is for you, you, and you, and it's not a message to attack you. It's a message to help you get to the next level in mm. your Christianhood. Can I Amen. insert apostles yes. there too? And and people, you got to realize that um, growing hurts. Growing it it has a certain pain to it. It has a certain uh, threshold that we have to endure to grow. So when when you are being challenged to grow, especially in the gospel, it is going to hurt. The gospel doesn't come to be friendly with people. The gospel comes to transform lives, save lives. It comes to give God the glory. But some of that does come with a certain threshold that human flesh or uh, the, the flesh in general just does not comprehend quite naturally. That's why a lot of times we do uh, try to oppose uh, naturally the gospel because sometimes the gospel challenges us to do things that are unnatural to our understanding. And when then people try to pull God into um, a box and, and when God doesn't fit that box, then people get upset and then they blame God for not being in the box with them. So there's a, there's a whole lot of, I don't want to go down that bunny <laughs> trail, but there's a whole lot in that, that people, and especially in this generation of apostle with the Gen Z, oh, uh, there's a lot of, um, not coming to the table to to understand there's a lot of coming to combat the gospel and blame the gospel for not you know not adhering to their desires but there there comes a time when a child must grow and go through growing pains mm -hmm. growth spurts uh teeth coming in hurts i'm seeing mm -hmm. that with my son it hurts but he needs them for life but they hurt while they come in so there's a lot of that that we are going to experience in the gospel as well amen amen this is true Amen. Growth does hurt. It, it, listen, it messes with every aspect of the heart, the yeah. mind, and the body, yeah. and the soul. And so um, often I sit, people ask uh, me and my wife all the time, and I want to give honor to her, to my wonderful wife, Pastor Rashonda. Amen. Amen. And um, they always ask, her, how do y'all, you know, y'all marriage is so this, and y'all, so, uh, even my spiritual father says, and said to us, you know, if, if I want to, if, if I'm going to remarry, I want to have a relationship just like you and your That's wife. That's beautiful. The, the the thing is, it's it's called Christian maturity. You know, yes, you got to get to a place where you you just don't allow things to cause you to react, right, right, or act out, right. You know, um, I, you know, you got to get over Pastor Corey. The thing where I want to be seen, I want to be acknowledged, mm -hmm. I want to be referenced. Do you see me now? Do you see me here standing, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. That's pretty much what happens with the body of Christ. We want to be seen. We want to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. We want to be, you know. And, and so, when you start maturing in the Lord, you you realize that it's not about you. That's it. It's not about that's you. It. And if God allows it to be about you, the, Amen. That's the powerful thing. That's the most wonderful thing. That's mm -hmm. God acknowledging you, Amen. And He's, he's he's showing you or putting you in a position where he wants you to be seen at a point of time. Even in churches, pastors in churches, uh, pastors are always trying to get their numbers up. They're trying to be seen. Yeah. They want to get more more people. I, I've I've settled. I've, I've, I've I'm Paul's in every state that I've learned to be content. Um, I'm learning that where you're at, Pastor Corey, mm -hmm. is where God wants you to be. Right. When He wants to take you to another level, He'll once He it. wants to bring in another hundred people or mm -hmm. hundred a thousand people, mm -hmm. it's all in God's hands. Yes, sir. It's all in God's and, hands. You know, Apostle, we we're in this generation, <coughs> especially uh, right now, that we have a lot of people seeking the viralness not necessarily the authenticity of the gospel itself. Mm -hmm. People, you know, you're seeing it with, you know, outlandish demonstrations happening in the churches even now, like just mm -hmm. a whole lot of craziness is going on and it's pulling people away from the gospel. Most times we don't even talk about what was preached. We're talking about what happened as far as the antics are concerned. Right, right. So people are chasing that that news feed, mm -hmm. you know, they want to be breached on the news feed. They don't want God to be breached in the gospel. It's, right. it's, it's that selfish st stuff that we're seeing in this generation. Very selfish. But like your message said, we got to grow up.
We have to grow up. <laughs> Got to grow up, and we have to grow up spiritually. Does God talk to you, people of God? Does mm. God ever speak Good question. to you? That's that's the question. Are you a, in a position where God ministers and speak to you and talk to you and tell you go sit down somewhere, uh, put a bit in your mouth, be quiet, you know, um, speak now, Amen. Uh, this, 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 you're in a position. I have another. Well, God speak to you. Say, I have another job for you. I have another place I want you to be. Mm-hmm. I listen. People, every, Pastor Corey, people are always saying to me. What are you talking about when you say you listen to God, you talk to God, mm-hmm. uh, and and it's a fact. I talk to God. That there is this. That's the point. When God speaks to you, you know when when Moses every time Moses went to the mount to speak to the Lord, mm-hmm. he came back a different individual. His countenance about his face was changed. Right. You know. Right. And so. This is Pastor Corey. This is how we know. And, and, and again, we're not attacking anyone right. because we want you to get into that place where you can embrace the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Get into that holies of holies. Amen. But Pastor Corey, when, when you get before God and then you're talking to God and God is talking to you, let me tell you, when you get it, I preached a message on my, almost 20 years ago, maybe 25. When you get in the presence of God, something is bound oh, to happen. Absolutely. Something is bound to happen. And people are going to see you know, when check this out, this is powerful. As Judas began to embrace the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ Himself, the more he was in the uh, the, the the surroundings of Christ, in the uh, midst of Christ, mm-hmm. the more because of the Holy Spirit of Christ, the more he felt he felt bad. He felt like I'm making a big mistake here. Right. Uh, I should not be doing this. And Jesus with his awesome self uh, well, does not do what we do or the, or the people of God do. He said, the person that dippeth his hand with me is the one who is attacking me. That's right. That's yet, right. yet, Jesus did not tell the disciples to whip his behind. He didn't call some people up to knock him out. He was very mature about handling Amen. What is about to happen with him? Because some things, people of God, some attacks, some situations in your life are supposed to happen mm-hmm. for growth. Mm. Help me, host, help me, Holy Ghost. So we we keep fighting some of these things that are happening to us, but they are for growth, right. and that's what we need to understand. Now, when Peter was with Christ. And Jesus uh, uh, had already ministered to them, him, to them. I'm about to be addressed. Peter had mm-hmm. already been with Christ. He already knew what was going on. But because we are in our flesh, that's what Peter was. He was one of the greatest uh, disciples, one of the greatest apostles. But he got in his flesh. He took the man's sword off, cut, his, cut the man's ear off yep. with his own sword. Yep. This, is a, this is a good example of growth. And when he was addressed with, were you with that man? And he said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He denied him. He denied him, and Jesus told him that he was going to deny him. This is what we're talking about, growth. So as he continued to move on, amen, mm-hmm. Peter become, became a dynamic apostle. Yes, he did. Amen. He grew up. When are we going to grow up and allow the Holy Spirit right. to allow us to grow up so that we can get to our destinations? Because some people think that we're supposed to get to this destination. When we reach one, amen, God and, 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 and tells us or deals with us, and we move on to another one and another one. Yes. If you're thinking that your life is, is about one destiny, hello, somebody, you're sadly mistaken. Right. Once you reach one, God will send you on another one. And amen, all things work together for the good, for them that love the Lord, hallelujah, Man, I feel like shouting. Come already. on, Apostle. Already, I feel like shouting. <laughs> Let's get it started. So I want people to contact people, get some people on. Yeah, listen, uh, Pastor Corey, one of the things that I said to a friend of mine is that, and my wife has said it, we, we talk about it all the time. Uh, when you have friends, and I think I've said it in your broadcast before, mm-hmm. when you have friends, you're going to hear the truth from your friends. Right. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. You know what? And I was listening back um, Sunday when you um, made this comment, and it was it was a simple thing, and you know you can laugh at it, but I, I experienced it today, mm-hmm. right? So I, it was with a coworker, so he I couldn't really call him friend, but I did for one man I didn't know what my coworker wouldn't do for me. Right. Here's my example. Uh-huh. I went out to a job today to go uh, take inventory for a client that needed some you know some stuff from us from from our industry. Mm-hmm. 
there was a gentleman that was coming looking for the same company, but he had an interview today. And I said, well, I'm here. I know where the company is, but they're, they're on the first floor and the second floor. It depends on who you're looking for. He said, okay, yeah, I got an interview today. So we were just chatting on, on our way back in. I ran to the car to grab something. He had his coat on, but his collar was flipped up. Uh-huh. When we walked in the building, I noticed his collar was flipped up. I said, hold on, sir, hold on. Let me flip your collar down. You're going for an interview. You got to look good. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, I went through that whole experience with him. Went, did the job. Went and went to a, a place to park so I could do some work. Got a coffee. Doing everything else. I get to work. This is two hours later. Uh-huh. There's this piece of lint just chilling on my beard. <laughs> now, I'm saying, the first thing I thought about was the message. I said, now... I've been with my coworker for two of those hours. Oh God, <laughs> this thing bright and white. I don't order coffee. I done <laughs> dealt with all kinds of people in between that. He couldn't tell me, "Hey, man, there's something on your beard." I'm like, <laughs> I did it for the man. I didn't know. <laughs> we gotta oh get out God. of this. Like, oh, he'll figure it out later. What if I don't? Exactly. You know, exactly. and that's something simple. But what if I don't know that it's something that is on me that mm-hmm. needs to be removed? Mm-hmm. When when are you going to tell me? Amen. Because the Bible said we are our brother's keeper. keeper. Yes. And so we need to start hearing from people that love us, right. that know us. And um, to, to win friends, you must show yourself to be friendly. Yes. You know, so you got to talk to people. You got to get friends and you got to get your friends to warn you. got to mm-hmm. get your friends to talk to you, to minister to you. Amen. If a lot of people, if you don't have no friends, it's because you don't want to be addressed. Oh. Get some friends, people, Say and that. get some friends in the gospel so they can minister to you. Amen. Listen, uh, w- the body of Christ is one body and you you cannot tell me you don't need leg, don't need that foot. Come foot on. Don't need that leg I'm telling you we need each other and so that's a part pastor Corey, of our growth amen the foot arm or toe or ear amen telling us hey get that together mm-hmm. fix that mm-hmm. you know deal with that amen uh my wife and i all the time we're always ministering to each other uh here's what i think you should do here's what you shouldn't do right. you know do this do that and people think as an apostle i don't listen to to my wife they think i don't listen to the, my bishop bishop williams bless his heart amen uh, but I listen to everyone, not just Bishop Williams and Amen, the overseers of the organization, but I listen to everyone. Yes, I, I have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to, from, from each one of them. Uh, but I will come back and I'll say to them, no, we're not doing that. The Holy Spirit is not leading me. Or I will say, oh, I could, I, I'm seeing what you're saying. The Lord is showing that to mm-hmm. me, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Right. Amen. And the church is us, people. Don't forget that. The church is us, you know. So I, I'm just trying to get people to grow up, and, and, and not me, but the Holy Spirit, we, because growth entails growth yes, sir. in all areas of your life. When you grow up in one area, growth a lot, as, uh, growth comes in other areas. You, yes, say, you know, you, you, growth comes physically, but if you're planting a garden, growth comes Amen. In your garden. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, so sir. once you grow, there's some other areas in your life grow. And, and just stop it. Just just stop it. Mm-hmm. Because some people keep saying, do you think, yes, baby, you need to grow up. Some of y'all are still on a man. You're still on a woman. You're still on one specific thing. And when you, uh, Pastor Girl, when you embrace one thing in your life, just one thing, amen, some of y'all have addressed the American dream. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> wife, the the picket fence, the dog, amen, and you still have not reached that goal. Right. You better ask some people that are married, what happens when you reach all of that? Where do we go from here? here. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Why, why go away? All our tears. Where do you go from there? We're following an American dream, what society has set up. But I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit is speaking yet in my tongue, on my tongue. The American dream may not be for you. God wants. God might have something else in store for you. Right. God might have uh, your path already laid out. So be led by the Spirit of God, and not by your flesh. Oh, I love that apostle. And I'm still waiting for y'all to get off the line and call three people, text three people, or while you're online, say, "Listen to this. You need this. You need this. Because this is your friend. Stop not telling your friend the truth. You need this. Get online, mothers. Call your sons and say, "Son, you need this. I know you're busy, but get online right now." Apostle is ministering about, "I'm growing. I'm growing." And so he's telling you, "You're growing. You're growing. You're growing." If do you know that you're growing? If you don't know you need to be a part of this study mm-hmm. and we should go to first corinthians the 13th chapter pastor Corey. uh let's do it like we did it in church sure um and we're gonna take our time with this it says in first corinthians the 13th chapter and go ahead pastor yes sir 
1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child. Stop. Stop. Because you have to acknowledge when you were a child. That's it. Do you, you understand that? Get some photos. Go back. <laughs> ask your mother to give you the photos. Amen. Go through your photo album. Amen. Look over your photo album. Pay attention to when you was had that little thing in your mouth. Your nose was running. Amen. Your your diaper was full. Uh, go back to that one when you were walking and your pants was halfway down. Uh, you know, where you had this big old spot on it. Look at all those pictures when you were a child, when you were a child, and identify that that's where I was mm -hmm. at one time. But let's get an understanding. You're not there anymore right you're not a child anymore let's understand that true adulthood biblically pastor starts watch this at the age of 12 years old biblically because christ amen was considered an adult at 12 years old yeah. when he went in and began to talk to the people he they, they they were looking at him like who is this child but he went in as an adult and embraced the scribes and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the scriptures amen and, and just just spoke it out as if he was an old uh, uh, what's the name? <laughs> right and so uh, what i'm saying to you all is pay attention to that don't pass this scripture and go straight to acknowledge you know and say to yourself pastor Corey, say to ourselves amen i remember when i used to act like that i remember when i was not in control um i remember when i was i used to just well off in my mouth i, I have friends now they say i just wish god would touch my mouth you know god can touch you touch your you, your you can shout you can dance he can do that well, so why hasn't god touched your mouth yet yeah are, are you are you putting your hand over your mouth so god won't get to your mouth mm. I, I don't i don't know you I'm know that re asking. that reminds me of Isaiah in the temple. He he needed a touch from God. He cried out. He said, "Oh, woe is me! I'm a man of unclean lips." He right. literally was saying, "God, yes, deal did. with this before you deal with anything yes, else." Because I'm telling you, I'm in this place. Yes, I'm a sinner. I'm a messed up man. Whatever you're here for, and I'm here at the same time. I'm telling you right now, I, I got stuff going on. You know, and so God solved that for him in the in the moment. Yes, God's looking for growth. He's yeah. looking for you to acknowledge. Yeah, David said, "I've acknowledged my what? I've acknowledged my." My mouth is, mm -hmm. is too much. Yeah. I acknowledge, you know, that I cry too much. I acknowledge, you know, that I argue too much. I curse too much. Whatever it may be. Yeah. Do you acknowledge? That's the first fr uh, freedom or first uh, action of saying, hey, if I want to get delivered from anything, right. I got to first acknowledge that this is a weakness. This Correct. is an issue. Correct. Listen, after three years, baby, come on, stop playing. Stop playing, stop playing, stop playing. After about three years, you should be, you. that should be a, a, a Man, that should be faded out. Yes, you know? sir. Yes, faded sir. out. That should be faded out. If you are still wrestling with that, you need to check your Holy Ghost gauge. Mm -hmm. You need to check your salvation. You need to check and see if the actual comforter that he left behind, you have that comforter. Because we keep growing and, and growing, growing and, and growing. growing. We don't stagnate. We don't, amen. We're not here in a position where we can't grow. God wants us to grow. Yes. You know? He said, but look, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. Even yes. as that's, so. that whole thing is about prosperity. Yes. I mean, about growth. It's about growth. Mm -hmm. God wants you to get to a position where you can grow. Amen. Because when you grow, you can handle the prosperity right. that God gives to you. If you find yourself going backwards over and over and over again, then listen, you're not growing. Yes. Amen. You're going in the opposite direction. And that's a problem. It's a problem in your home, it's a problem on your job, mm -hmm. it's a problem in your ministry. Pastors, when you cannot get these people to grow, when these people do not want to accept your pastorialship or the five-fold ministry, hallelujah, then guess what? You might as well dismiss them from your ministry because if, the, if, if people do not want to accept the teaching and live by it, stop Going, stop engaging with this religious show act of, of church churchery. I was going to say debauchery, but churchery. <laughs> yes, Amen. Churchery. Because you, 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 you're you not growing. Yeah. Yes, it sounded good. It felt good. But you are still in the same position. And guess what? You left my church. You left that church. You left that church over there. You moved out of town. You moved in the city. You're still the same person. See, it's not the church. It's not the person. It's not the preacher. It's not the church temple that you belong to. Listen, baby, let's just go and accept it. It's you. Yeah. It's you. 
You can't keep a husband. You can't keep a wife. You can't keep a boyfriend. You can't keep a girlfriend. And why you keep trying to keep them anyway when you really need to get get in a relationship with you? Oh, no, I didn't. Mm, 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 no, mm. I didn't. I'm so sorry. That just came out through the Holy Spirit. The first relationship that you need is a relationship with you and you in Christ. Hello, somebody. Hello. Yes, sir. You got to yes, tell sir. yourself, I need to get myself together to embrace the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, well, you need a relationship with Christ first. No, I need a relationship with myself first. Yeah. I need to know who I am. I need to identify who I am. Yes, sir. Where I'm going, what I'm going to do, how I talk too much. Amen. The Bible says, let a man examine, examine himself. himself. Yes, sir. When is the last time, people of God, uh, have you exa- literally sat down? Because when I examine someone, they get mad and frustrated. You just did you just daddy, you don't no baby. I'm doing what the Bible tells us as leaders. We've become the judges of the nation. Yes. And so if I come to you, it's definitely not coming to you to make you look bad or feel bad. I'm looking for growth. Yep. I'm looking for growth because I know if I can get my friend to grow, if I can get you to grow in the ministry, if I can get you to grow in your life, amen. Uh, Paul said, I feed. I feed you so that it'll be food for the both of us. Yeah. We both grow in the spirit. I'm sorry, I got outside myself. I'm just trying to give people some time. Get somebody on the line. Yes, sir. Get your son, get your daughter. Amen. Get your sister. Amen. Get your brother. Get your father. Get them on the line. Get them on this broadcast. Say, you need this. Listen to it. If you're at work, put an earplug in your ear. Listen to this. Pastor Corey, say it again. When I was what? When I was a child, uh-huh. I spoke. As a child. I spoke as a child. I spoke as a child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I spoke as a child. That's what happened to me. Listen, when, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I spoke as a child. Okay, I was childish. I spoke as a child. I acted like a child. That's mm-hmm. Corey. Mm-hmm. When you see my, when I see my grandson, he acts like a child. He don't act like an adult. But sometimes, <laughs> That's right. I, I don't know, sometimes he do act like an adult. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> sometimes he... he he has his own little mind. He think he got a little mind of a man, but uh, oh my god, we, we got to cultivate that. A Sometimes little more. he acts like a ma- adult. But when I was a child, I speak as a child. Yeah. I did as a child. Now, Pastor Square, why is it that people are always looking for a child to be an adult, an adult to be a child? Mm. We should be, uh, we, we should be looking for an adult to be an adult and a child to be a child. Yep. But when we look out past of the naked eyes that we look, that the God has given us, we see adults phasing back. Child. I can tell you one of the reasons why is because we have grown to embrace the culture that wants to tell everybody to live their truth. Mm-hmm. And that truth living generation who's outside of the truth, they're just living out whatever they feel, uh-huh. has created the, no- the normalcy for people to just do weird and just ungodly things uh-huh. in the sake of, well, this is my truth. This is who I am. Well, we have a whole mental illness uh, uh, pandemic mm-hmm. going on right now because everybody wants to just live out how they feel. Mm-hmm. And we disregard oh we disregard the authenticity that is going on already that has been established before we can even feel, think, or imagine. The Bible says, Apostle, that God knew us uh-huh. before. That's right. Th- this, this is the part I think people miss. They think the womb is the one thing. It's not even the womb. It's before we even reach conception. Right. He knew us. Before. 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 Mm-hmm. Which, mean, which goes back to Genesis 1 and 1. He knew us in the beginning. Uh-huh. He knows us while we're here. Mm-hmm. He knows us for eternity. Mm-hmm. He knew us before we even had the ability to think or feel or consider what our truth may be. Mm-hmm. He knew us. He had a relationship with us prior mm-hmm. to us having a relationship with anything. But what our relationships with this world and what our relationships with everything else is, is we tell an adult, it's okay to be a child Mm -hmm. because you're having a bad day. Uh. It's okay to be a girl because you as a man feel more accepted in this capacity. Mm -hmm. Instead, the Bible tells us to grow up a child Mm -hmm. in the way they should Go. go. That's right. But we're not doing that no more. I'm not saying we as in general. We're not doing that no well, more. Because well, society uh, told us that that was wrong. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't apply that. We shouldn't focus on that, you know. Um, and, and the thing is, is that um, it, I hate to say it. Mm-hmm. God, I'm going to get some attacks. But 
this emotional thing in your generation is it's out of control. Out of control. It is out of control. When we were coming up, you know, even Pastor Corey, when 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 I was coming up, when we got in trouble, and it looked like we were going to look a certain way, or we had a you know oh. I know what you're talking about. Man. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The old school saints. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shut it, it down. If it looked like we were breaking bad. Yes, sir. If you had, if a boy had a twitch yeah. or a switch about his walk or something. Or anything. Or anything. When they when the parents said something to us and we wanted to say something back, mm -hmm. we got knocked into a bilious. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just and for not, I, oh, I know. If no, you don't say yes, feeling. sir, no, yes. sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You better not act like you feel any kind of way. Yeah. You better not act like you feel any kind of way. Yes, sir. And 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 it became a <laughs> it became a common practice to us that once we were in that you know being chastised by our parents, not to feel mm -hmm. anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you know what is crazy. Y'all always say, uh, "Stop that crying." I'm gonna give you something to cry about. Well, yes. you already gave me something to cry yes. about. Yes. I'm crying about that. <laughs> And, and, you know, one of the things my mother or father parents would beat us and say, keep crying, mm -hmm. keep crying. I'm like, this hurt. I'm going to keep crying. This is <laughs> and, and, you're, and trying to stop crying yeah, right. it hurts. It's, that's, listen, but this is powerful. Listen, listen to this, Pastor Corey. When your parent or our parents were whipping us while and saying, you keep crying, keep crying. Right. You literally controlled your crying. You stopped crying. Mm -hmm. So that let oh mm -hmm. that let us know that we have the ability yes, we do. to control our emotions. Yes, we do. Because we learned it during that time. Now I'm gonna tell you why we don't we, we don't have the the ability to do it now because in your generation, because society and the government and, and child protective services yeah. has started embracing us so much yeah. that we, you know, Put them in time out. And, yeah. and this is how you know these people have no idea what they're doing. It's, it's the psychologists, the, uh, the counselors, they, they really don't know what they're doing because every individual person is different. I, I owned a daycare. I owned an actual daycare, a, a large number of daycare, and they, they told us that um, we cannot spank the child, hit the child. And then they told us, you, 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 if you feel like you need to do something, put them in timeout. Mm -hmm. Years passed. Then they came and said, don't put no child in timeout no more. You know, try to talk to the child. So they're telling us to talk to a child as if a child is an adult. Mm -mm. The child has a child like mine. They, ca they cannot embrace adulthood, but you want us to talk to them like... Now, if you look at society right now, Pastor Corey, look oh. at the generations right now, yeah. none of that stuff said... that None of that stuff that they said came true. Now we have children killing children, and children killing their parents, children walking on the job, the malls. People are killing, killing, killing because of their emotions and their feelings. But when I was a child and my mother and father saw that I was er erring in a certain way, mm -hmm. they take that belt out, and the Bible says to take that rod out, and the rod of correction will remove that spoilness, mm -hmm. remove that wickedness or that evenness. It worked. I tell you, it worked, Pastor yes, Corey. Yes, sir. And so that's what we need to embrace. And I'm not saying that on air, so nobody will say, he told me to beat my child, you know. You have to go to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have to minister to him. He has to minister to you on what needs to be done, amen, with your child, amen, and stop associating yourself with this USA, amen, tactic of, of some manual or book that has been written by someone who had never even had a child. Ambassador, let me just, let me just drop this in there real quick to them. Uh, Proverbs 13 and 24, and, and, and this is just simple. This is a proverb, right? This is, this, you don't even have to believe in Jesus for this to make sense. This, this just makes sense. He who withholds the rod of discipline hates his son. Mm, that's what the Bible says. So all this out of control, out of error generation we're seeing is from a people that actually come from the parents who hate them. Yes. That, yes. That's, this is what the Bible says. Yes, he who withholds yes. the rod of discipline hates his son. Hates. But he who loves him ah. disciplines and trains him diligently and appropriately with wisdom and love. Now, I read that from the Amplified just for the listeners tonight. But basically, where we get the the, the, uh, the adage that we always say, spoil the uh, 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 what is it? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Mm -hmm. This is what we're seeing. We're seeing this because... People have put the rod about ambassador in the closet. Yep. But it was good for David because he said, thy rod yes. 
Yes. Let's just stop right there. He said, thy rod, it comforts me. De David was definitely chastised. Yes, sir. Definitely disciplined. Yes, sir. But the Bible says if you if you hold withhold that rod, you actually hate your son. Mm -hmm. Hate them. Listen, I remember when my son, I love him. He was break, trying to break bad with me. And I took off my shirt, my T-shirt. I got mm -hmm. on my knees. He was about, mm, I could say he probably was about uh, 11 or 12 years old. I said, come on, let's, let's get it on, bro. Let's get it on, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, and uh, our children really actually feel like they can, they can beat us today, you know. Mm -hmm. But there is a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's something in a parent that you, you, don't, you don't see when they get older. Right. And that you, you, you address your parent the wrong way. You about to be knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so, but Pastor Corey says, when I was, I spake as a child. He says, I understood as a child yeah. because Pastor, children understand as a child. That's they, it. they, you know, and when we look back at them and talk to them and see them. We understand, amen, that they're thinking like a child. We have to sit back, Pastor Gordon, and we're going to, even when it comes down to our members, you know, I, when I was a pastor, amen, I looked at the person dead in the eyes, and I looked, I, I could tell, even though this was an adult I was uh, it had in my office, I was really dealing with a child. Mm -hmm. I was, you, you understand? Mm -hmm. And so, as a pastor, I had to, uh, you know, put myself in a position of, trying to talk to this child and also trying to get this child to embrace adulthood. Right. And that's, it's a hard thing. Right. It is a very hard thing. So when I was a child, I spaked as a child. Go ahead, Pastor. I did what? I thought as a child. Thought as a child. I'm sorry. Let me go back. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Mm -hmm. I understood. As a what? As a child. As a child. I thought mm -hmm. as a child. Leave me, if I'm a child, leave me in my child position mm -hmm. to... Amen. To speak like one, to speak like one, to understand like one, have a thought like one. Don't try to put me in adulthood. Leave me where I'm at. Right. Amen. Amen. But 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 now adults, 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 adults. When you're an adult, you're an adult. You cannot be a child. You cannot act out like a child. Mm -hmm. You cannot retaliate as a child. You have to be an adult. Then what it says, Pastor. It says, but when I became a man. But when I became a man. I put away. When I became an adult, I put away what? Childish things. Childish things. When I became a man, when I became an adult, I put away, Pastor, childish things. Mm -hmm. I stopped doing the things that I used to do, how I used to act, what I used to say. I knew when to be quiet, Pastor. I knew when to put a bit in my mouth. I knew this is not the time to do this. This is what an adult does because a child lashes out. Pride sets in when, when pride sets in when it's, you're dealing with a child. You know, I got to get back at that person. That's a child. I'm going to show them something. That's a child. Right. All of this stunts your growth, and it stunts, stunts your growth in other areas of your life. When we come down, beloved, amen, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. You know, that growth stops in prosperity. It stops in relationship. It stops, amen, on your job. You can't get your raise. You can't become a supervisor because you haven't grown up yet. And some of y'all try to move to different countries, different states, different places, you know, thinking it's going to work if you go over here. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Listen, and, and it may, it may, it may because, you know, sometimes we have some supervisors who just do not agree with our, uh, who we are and don't like or jealous of our, you know, um, who we are. Right. And, and but 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 mainly it's because amen, you still have a childlike mentality. Mm. You've addressed some people on your job or some people have addressed your supervisors or managers and told them, Amen. When when Pastor Corey, when somebody tell a person one thing and then uh, uh, 10 other people tell them the same thing who are not interacting with each other, right. it may be so. It's it's something. Right, it's something, <laughs> something and and, I, and we're seeing that with all these um, high profile court cases right now, uh, and, and yeah, everything's still alleged, but there's still a lot of things that connect to right. one another. So right. somewhere in the line, something happened. Something happened. <laughs> you know, you can't just completely just erase the fact that multiple people have declared this similarity toward you. Something, something took place. Took place. Yeah, you've engaged somewhere with somebody somehow. Yeah. You know, something to and me. it's it's stuck to you. Mm -hmm. It's stuck to you. And so um, one of the things the Lord ministered me, Pastor Corey, and, and for you all that are listening, is that uh, we need to take a minute. Amen. We need to start going back to some of the basic things about, you know, um, 
uh, talking about, you know, um, life skills, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people in your congregation don't even know how to balance a checkbook. Yes, sir. There's a lot of people who don't know what to do when they go on a job interview. And, Pastor, we keep encouraging these people. Uh, we keep encouraging people. You can make it. You are, you're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. These people don't even know how to open the scriptures, how to find right. Corinthians. They don't know how to uh, check, balance a checkbook, as we said. They don't know how to pay bills. They don't know how, you know, when to say this and when not to say that, you know. It's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of childish things that's going on that allows a person not to grow up so they can be all that God wants them to be. Right. You said earlier, you said God knows us. And, and that was what you said earlier, that mm -hmm. God knows us. And what you were really talking about is God had the plan for us. Yes, sir. See, the, the reason why God knows you because he's already ordered your steps. Right. The Bible said my steps are ordered by the Lord. He's already ordered your steps. Mm -hmm. He already knows from the, from the time of your con um, you were conceived, amen, whether it was in sin <laughs> or, or, or whether it was yeah. in, you know, uh, 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 honesty or trueness or, you know, purity, um, God had a plan for you. Right. You know, understand? Right. He had a plan for you, you know, you, you know, you, you, you were there, you were conceived, you were birthed, and God says, I have a plan for you, for right. that person. So he know, he knew us. He has a plan. He, he has a direction. Amen. He has destiny for us. God know us because he's the one who operates, who constructs, amen. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the potter, amen, is over the clay in yes, the book sir. of Jeremiah. And so that he molds that clay mm -hmm. just where, and when he feels like, okay, uh -huh. you know. I was just going to say, it's his decision. It's his decision. Yep. And when he feels like, you know, okay, well, I want to move to something else, the Bible says he remolds that clay. Yes. We are being made over, um, over and over again. Yeah. We're being made over and over and over again. And so, amen, I don't know about you, Pastor, but I find myself growing constantly. Yes, sir. Constantly, God is taking me to a different, another level and another level and another level. Mm -hmm. And and I see where, I, I, and I thank God he has even allowed me to see some of it where he's taking me. You yes, understand? Sir. Yes, sir. Um, so what am I saying? A lot of us are mimicking other people doing and mm -hmm. hoping that it works for us. What God has for me, it is for me. It ain't for the for these or those. It's for me. Right. So stop trying to be everybody else and be what God has ordained you to be. That's right. And and seek God. The Bible says, seek God where He may be found. Talk to the Lord. Minister to God. God, what do you want me to do? Most of our where we're going is we don't know where we're going because we never ask God. We have not because we ask not. Seek Him and you should find. Knock on the door. Should be on. Lord, God has a plan for me. I want to know what that plan is, Pastor Corey. I want to know where God, and some of y'all right now, I'm talking about you adults, you adults right now. Think where you're at is where God wants you to be. And he's saying, yeah, three years ago, you're still there. It's time for you to take your life to the next level. Take yeah. your marriage to the next level. Take your relationships to the next level. I don't want any of my friends to be in the same position we were in three years ago. Mm -hmm. I literally, Pastor Corey, if you're a friend of mine, I literally say to my friends, you know, you're still doing that, right? Yeah. You've been doing that for three years. What, what's, what's up? You know, Apostle, I, I, I want to kind of hit this real quickly, too, just in the same in the same message. You know, it, it, Paul's saying um, when he became a man, he put away childish things. I think one of the one of the number one questions we have to ask the body of Christ and believers and unbelievers alike, do you want to? Mm -hmm. You know, do you do you want to? Because he's saying when he became a man. The childish things he had to physically, mentally, spiritually put them away. He's yes, basically sir. saying they didn't just they didn't just stop on their own. He, these were decisions he had to mature into. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't be like that no more. Mm -hmm. I can't respond like that no well, that's, more. That's I why can't I said, act I, like that no more. That's why when it says, Pastor, I, I, but, uh, but when I became a man, I put away. I put away. That's a choice. That's a choice. That's a choice. Just like choice. just like Christ. Christ got up in the tomb. And put his clothes down. He mm -hmm. put them away. He fold, they were folded neatly. That that means he made a decision yes. as to how that presentation was going to be. He didn't yeah. just get up out of his out of his uh, uh, out of the grave and just come on out. He had a preciseness to him. He had a maturity about him. Even as he came out of death, mm -hmm. he had a mind. That's why Paul says, "Let this mind be in you, which That's is also awesome. in Christ Jesus." Have a mind for all of this. Mm -hmm. all, all all these areas need to be grown up. He oh, said, he said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus, because he wanted you to have a mind, the mind of Christ, the adulthood of Christ. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? Remember, what did we say in the beginning of the study? This happened at 12. At 12. Which also, <laughs> Apostle, what people don't realize is, now I'm not studying this, but I'm going to make this um, general. This can also be said this was the same age as Mary when she conceived Christ. Mm -hmm. Because this is when women or, you know, in that culture was mm -hmm. con was considered, as you said, uh, in their adulthood. So by this point, Mary had already had to experience going through that period of time. Mm -hmm. So Jesus preaching at 12, mother, his mother conceiving him around the same age means a whole lot about their maturity and their capacity to handle the will of God. Jesus was able to teach at 12, not just because he was God in the flesh, but because he was mature to stand before men yeah. at 12 years old, whose great teachers were in that synagogue, I'm sure. Uh -huh. People that were challenging the faith was in that synagogue, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But he was able to precisely go to the scriptures, teach, and nobody... <laughs> Could say nothing and about they it. Said, they said, they, they said, isn't that Joseph's child? Uh, is that, that carpenter's that boy. Carpenter's boy. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's up with that? You know, people are astonished. They cannot believe that God has chosen you. But apostle, here's the thing. Like, and I want to say this too. Like, we are just happy if our children are getting, you know, um, just getting by in these classes. C's and, you know, they're just skate, skating by. But Jesus, to be able to be in that capacity, had to be one of the best in his in his group, in his class, in, you know, in his capacity to do that. It was very impressive, not just because he was Jesus, but because, first of all, they weren't looking at him like that just yet. Exactly. That, that wasn't the capacity that we know for them three years of the gospel wasn't that capacity just yet. But he stepped on the scene, mm -hmm. was very well mannered. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, uh, you know doing all the cultural things all the kids were doing because he had he had a purpose about him. He yes. took it seriously. Yes. Even at that young of age, he took it seriously. Yes. And, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we have to understand that uh, God called us for a purpose. Yeah. I mean, listen, I was, I was called to preach at an early age. I started preaching at 12, at 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, and people did not understand who I was mm -hmm. in any capacity. Right. They didn't, you know, um, I was attacked. I've been attacked. I was attacked by family. I was attacked by friends, mostly by family, um, because, you know, who do you think you are? Even, when, Pastor, when I was in school, I had a teacher who literally slapped me. What? Yes, yeah, she slapped me. And, she's, and I, my brother stays in contact with her today. And I told her, tell her I want to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you got some get back you need. Um, no, I'm, talk, I'm joking. I just I'm want to talk to her, you know. Um, but um, I had my counselors. Um, I had a lot of stuff going on. Um, they were amazed. Um, I, I was um, doing a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, before my time, in mm -hmm. a sense. But I want to say to, to you people, and I don't know you, you think this is a boring study, but... You really need to examine yourself. I grew up uh, and became an adult at a very early age, which allowed me to be able to take care of myself. Right. Because adulthood allows you to take care of yourself. Right. Um, and so if you can get there, if, if I can help, Pastor Corey can help you get there, you're going to find that all roads lead to, to a great life. He says, I came in, here's what the Bible says, I came that you might have life and that more abundantly. abundantly. Yep. And so uh, these attacks, some of these attacks that you're being attacked with or things that you, uh, these things that you're going through is, you know, we we blame a lot of things on the devil, Pastor Corey. We, we say the devil did this and the devil I, did that. I say it all the time. We, we do it. We, get, we come to church and, and a lot of the westernized church is built on victimization. Mm -hmm. But I tell the people of God all the time, I'm, I'm quick to say it. I've been a suspect in my own demise uh -huh. more than I have been a victim. <laughs> you know, and, and I think once we realize like, hey, some of this stuff we did, we caused mm -hmm. our own selves. Right. Stop coming in here talking about what they did. What did you do? The, the first thing, like you said, let a man examine himself. What did you do in the matter yes. that also caused destruction, caused the thievery to happen? You let the back door in. The devil didn't just show up. Right. You let the back door in. You you allowed him to come in. You didn't secure. You didn't do all the things. So he, of course, he's coming. That's Because right. he know you you left an opening. Of course, <laughs> you left cookies for Santa, but it was really for Satan. You know. I like but <laughs> but for real, apostle, like sometimes you got to look back and examine. You know what? 
the reason why I might be promiscuous is because of what I did when I was 11. Yeah. The reason why I might be uh, not as educated is because of what I did in the classroom. That's right. I was goofing off. I wasn't, you know, there's a lot of reasons to why we haven't acquired the level of growth and, and the level of maturity, the level of development that the Bible has called us to have in this moment. Right. It, it may be because when you look back, you might have been like Apostle Paul. You might have been a persecutor of Christians. You might have been opposing the church. Why? That's why Jesus came and said, why are you? Why do you come against me? Right, you right. know, and then Paul, for 10 to 14 years from that period, apostle had to mature mm -hmm. for the level of apostleship, That's right. for the level of building a church. Right. After he built the life reputation to persecute, mm -hmm. he had to mature so he like Paul's ability to do that while people looked at him as a betrayer of Christianity. But he's yet building churches takes a level of growth that we probably couldn't even fathom in him. Yeah, and then some of the apostles too. Not only that, but they opposed apostle, them. They they had to, uh, you know. Uh, I remember one of the stories of one of the, the two two of the apostles uh, uh, having some type of agitation, yeah. and the, one of them says that you go on with him, you yeah. go with him, yeah. and uh, because y'all 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 can't do this together, yeah. you know. And eventually, um, they came back together mm -hmm. because uh, while they were away, somebody grew up. Right, you understand. Right. And, and that's the thing, people of God. We want you to understand that you're going to have to grow up. You got to keep growing and growing and growing. This is going to help us. Uh, this is you're going to help the church. You're going to help uh, your family. If you start accepting the fact that I, I, I'm just too immature, right. I need to grow up, you know. And even how you handle relationships. Some of y'all got lovers, or you have people that you're going with, or people that you like, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know if they if they don't change, you got to change. Sometimes your change brings about their change. It's true. You know, it's true. And so um, if, if this calls, listen, my greatest, uh, the reason why I prosper, the Lord bless me so much, amen, is because I grew up. I don't, me, my, my wife and I, I don't do, I don't believe in that arguing. We don't believe in that fighting. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in that. And, and there were times years ago I was telling them, oh, no, we're not doing that, baby. We're not, oh, no, we're not doing that. You know, we're adults. We're going to sit down and we're going to have a conversation, right. not no confrontation, you know. And so somebody has got to, if you got to swallow your tongue for pride's sake, somebody has got to say, oh, no, we're not doing this. Yeah. We're going to do We're going to handle this as an, even if you got to swallow your tongue and say, yeah, you were right. I shouldn't have never said that. Mm -hmm. I should have never did that. Amen. Because doing this, Pastor, we can move on. Right. Instead right. of being stagnated, amen, wondering and, 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 and uh, acting like, you know, we don't, we're not biblical people. I right. like, we act like the, we don't know the gospel that we're taught to excel and exceed and be successful in, in everything. Yes, sir. You know, even when, as you were saying earlier, even if you did do something wrong, even if you, even though, even if the enemy did attack you, everything you go through, Pastor, is for growth. Yes, sir. Your mistakes are for growth. Yes, sir. If, if we let them. That's correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, because you have to say, hey, "Amen." How do I grow from this? Mm -hmm. Where do I go? Where do I go from this? Where do I, how do I grow from this? Right. And you, and the Bible says, "Let a man examine himself." Because look at that situation. Look at it fully. Stop mm -hmm. looking at it on just your side, your eyes, your ears. Mm -hmm. Look at it where you can. That the Holy Spirit can embrace it mm -hmm. and says, "Hey, look, you were wrong by this, but right. do this. Right. You step down. You should step up. Yeah, absolutely. You went left, but you should have went right. That's good. The Holy Spirit will minister to you. So I leave unto you a what? Comforter. Comforter. He leaves. He leaves you an advisor. He mm -hmm. leaves you something that's going. And guess what, Pastor? When you, even when it seems like you're not flowing in the advisory, you know, under the advisory, yes, sir. You have leaders that he placed in your spirit in your in your life. Yeah. You have advisories, or and you're in the spirit of advisory in every aspect of your life. Yes, sir. So you know, you there shouldn't be no way you should go in this direction because somebody is advising you. Hey. <laughs> What you doing? Yep. Pastor Corey, what you doing? Yep. You know, so you're going to get it from the Holy Spirit. You're going to get it from your wife. Mm -hmm. You're going to get it from your, your friend. Mm -hmm. You're going to get it from a coworker. Listen, we get it from all kinds of areas. We get it from different areas of our lives. And we can we can make it. <laughs> Amen. That's a PTL thing. Y'all yes, don't know about that. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. I want to see some of the comments, Pastor Cor. Read some of the comments. Yes, sir. We're yeah, right. yeah. We're um, <clears throat> we got several. Uh, let me go up a little bit and, and pull some. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, Sister Charlene says the key is disciplining in wisdom. That was when we were talking about um, uh, disciplining the child. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, 
Your wife says, uh, Pastor uh, Rashonda says, the potter shapes and molds clay according to Jeremiah 13. We have to ask ourselves, are we pliable? Uh, can we be shaped and can we be molded or are we hardened? I love that. I love that question right there. Um, let's see. Darlene says, next level. Yes, come on. Uh, let's see here. Dion says, when we become of age, everything is a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, Ursula says, we have the right to choose. Pastor Sierra says that's right. It's a choice. It's a decision, but not hard, but shouldn't need to be forced. Charlene says uh, Jesus knew who he was. That changes everything. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, your wife gave a breakdown of um, of a bar mitzvah around the time when boys and girls, <clears throat> excuse me, reached the age of 12 or 13. The ceremony marks the time when a boy or girl becomes a Jewish adult. This means that they are now responsible for their own actions and can decide for themselves how they would like to practice Judaism. And we can't seem to uh, get our children to decide if they want to get off TikTok or not. But that's for a whole nother conversation. <laughs> My wife, she's just, just got to get so deep. <laughs> she, she's a teacher. She's a teacher. Thank you for that. Thank you for that woman of God. Um, and then Ursula, I'll, 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 um, and I'll get Amy's comment last too. So Ursula says, uh, you either run from it or you learn from it. Uh, that's good right there. And then, um, Amy says, oh wait, but what about someone coming to the point of knowing they have to be the change, start growing and seeing no growth in those around them. Okay. So she's asking a question here, Apostle, if you want to answer, she's saying, um, what about when someone is coming to the point? of knowing that they have to be the change, um, do they start growing and seeing no growth in the, uh, I think she's asking if they start growing and seeing no growth in others around them, I guess she's asking what, what should that person do? If that makes sense. Uh, and don't right now, uh, tell her to re type it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I might, got, I might've got a little jumped. I tried to do it twice, Amy. So give it back to us again and we'll yeah. answer that. Give but it back I, to us again. I think she has a really good question there. I think we should answer. But. Galatians, the fifth chapter said, you did run well. <clears throat> yes, sir. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? You did run well. You did run well. Mm-hmm. Here's the Bible saying that you were on the right track. You were doing good. Everything was smooth. But something hindered you. Now, let's just be honest. What hindered you? Start labeling, start writing down, Mm -hmm. start identifying what is your biggest hindrance. Yes. What is it? Who is it? Where is it? Just just, just be honest with yourselves. Stop being a man, dishonest with yourself. Stop, just be honest with yourself. Just say, what hindered me? Was it my sexual desires? Was it money? Was it uh, favoritism of liking something more than loving more something loving something more than God? That's the first thing you have to do. David said, "I acknowledge mm-hmm. my transgression. I acknowledge this thing." When are you going to acknowledge? She is a weakness to you. Mm-hmm. He is a weakness to you. Um, and and how do we dis- you know when you say when God says, "I will love the Lord thy God with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind." Where is that at when you still start loving something more than you love him? Mm, then that, that can't be all. It can't, right. Yeah, it's some. You it, love the Lord some with some of your Lord heart. Some, mm-hmm. not all. But he said, I will love the Lord with all my heart. Remember, I told you I was going to come and I'm going to teach that thing. Mm-hmm. How far, how much is I will love the Lord with all my heart? Right. All my soul. Right. That, that's a, that's you, a, just, you just put an illustration in my head right that's now. That's a teaching. I, that's a teaching, brother. That's a revelational teaching right there. I got to write this down. You just, um, put a, you just put something in my mind. And so what's hindering you? Let's just be honest. If if, it, if her name is Glenda, if her, his name is Ray Ray, if, his na- if her name is mm-hmm. Lisa, or just what is it? You know, is it is it is it money? Is it the car that you drive? Mm-hmm. Um, what's hindering you? Let's just be honest. What is hindering you? Is it yourself, your emotions, your feelings, your desires, your wants? What is hindering you for God's sake? Let's say it now. Mm -hmm. Let's embrace it now. Stop playing church. Let's find out what's stopping, what's hindering, what's causing you to be the way you are. Right. Stop now. Just, let's just stop it. 
The Bible says in Galatians, the fifth chapter, the, per, the, the persuasion that cometh not of him that call of you, mm -hmm. a little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. Pastor, explain that for me, a little leaven. Yes, so the Bible here is talking about, you know, what, what hindered us. And then it says, clearly right here, and um, for those of you that understand cooking, it doesn't take a whole lot to affect the whole. That's what the Bible is saying. Talk, the, to affect that bread. That, the whole bread. Right. It says a little leaven, a, a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. It, it says a little bit, Apostle, to affect the whole, to mess up the whole thing. It don't take a whole lot. This, yes. can, this can go both ways, but specifically right here it says this. Whatever hindered you could have been a small thing, mm -hmm. but it's hindered your whole race. Whole life. It could have been a small pebble in the road, but that small pebble... <sighs> Has hindered your whole life. I tell you what, you get something stuck in your foot. Oh God! And and you walking, it, and you get that little rock in your shoe. It mess up your whole. You, it <laughs> your bothers you the whole yep. time. It sure so do. You have to stop. It sure does. You have to stop. Mm -hmm. Get that pebble out and say thank you, Jesus. Yep, you know absolutely, absolutely. Um, but it's, it just takes. So so let's identify. Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it is it sex? Is it pornography? Is it uh, playing cards? Is mm -hmm. it gambling? Is it what is it that is so overwhelming in your life that it has sucked you in and um, put, put you in a position where you can't see nothing else? You can't see your wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't see the people in your life that love you. Uh, you can't. You don't know how to talk. Just, just, just get to that point where you can start saying, "This is a problem for right, me." Right. Right. This is this is a problem. So for that me. that that that's good, Apostle. Let's let's go back to Amy because she dressed up her question, and I think this is good. She, her the timing was perfect for the scripture too. So here's what she's saying. She's saying, "What does a what does someone do when they realize they have to be the change? They start changing and growing, but they see no growth in those around them." Well, I tell you, one of the things that we have to do is focus on us. Mm -hmm. We need to stay focused on us. Because you see, if, if you see a change in you, just keep doing, just keep growing, keep, right. keep, keep growing, and keep going. Mm -hmm. Don't fo don't worry about it and focus on these other people. Should we have empathy on people that won't change? I'm, I'm doing a side see, B question, empathy, her question. Should we have empathy on people that won't change? Because that's the, at the, essentially what she's talking about is she's the seeing Bible. the need to change, but the people around her she don't see changing. And, I, and there's the Bible a, said, lay aside every weight. Mm -hmm. And sin. So if there's some people around you that are not growing, you lay them aside. Mm -hmm. Pay no attention to them. Mm -hmm. And stay in the mode or in a mood of, I must continue to go forth. Right. I will, the Bible says I will press toward the mark for the prize uh -huh. of the, the high, high calling. calling. I'm going to stay focused on where I'm going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're worried about or staying focused on all these people around you, then mm -hmm. you've taken your eyes off where you're going. So what happens when that person grows, <clears throat> but then they take their growth and put it back in that environment where those people that aren't grown, what, what happens to the individual that, that began to then see growth? you have growth? not grown in that area. Okay. You, 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 you're growing and then you go back and put yourself in that, what's the name? Mm -hmm. You should have never done that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you discern and found and, 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 and come to the conclusion that if, if I go back there, I'm going to get, I'm going to start doing the things that I used to do. Mm -hmm. So I press toward the mark. Right. I, I go forward. I don't. I can't look back. Right. I cannot look back. Your wife always used to say, you know, that all the time. She was always an advocate, and I used to tell her, "Stay focused. Stay mm -hmm. focused. Pressing forward. Don't look back." Right. You know. And people listen, Pastor Gore. <clears throat> people would address her with, "She thinks she's this, and she thinks she's that." They did the same thing with me, you know, because I, I kept going forward. I could. Right. I could. I couldn't go back. Right. You know? Right. I don't like uh, uh, listen to adolescentism of people who talk simple and immature. I, I press on, you know, that stuff bothers me. It mm -hmm. doesn't bother you that people are still, uh, uh, Amy still acting the same way they act. What, what do you, what do you get out of that? Right, what right. do you want to, why do you want to be, uh, uh, associate, associate yourself with that crowd of people or connection? You want to say, Hey, like we used to say, see you and don't want to be you. When we move on, we press toward the mark. So, that's what we do. If people around you are not growing, you can't say people in the church. You got to be talking about these other friends, right? Because the people in your church, people in your ministry, are growing in the Lord, and that's who you need to attach yourself to. The people in your church and your ministry, your friendships, said the Holy Spirit. Right. Amy, Holy Spirit is speaking to me right now. The, your friendships need to change. Mm. It's okay to let go some old friends, mm -hmm. some old friends, and family members. 
I've let go a ton of family members, a ton of them. And a lot of them saying he think he's all that. And some of them are mad and some of them are angry. And some of them have talked about me, even my own family members. I'm talking about close family members that sat around, had conversations about me, just on and on to the break of dawn, you know, of me. But it didn't affect me. I kept growing, I kept growing, and I kept going. Kept growing and kept going. While they're still stagnated in the position they were when they were talking about me. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Well, what is the problem, Amy? Just keep moving on, honey. You don't have to focus on them. You focus on where God is taking you. Because mm-hmm. when you stop, if you start staying focused on them, you're going to get off track because you're, back, you, you're going backwards. Mm-hmm. You understand? Amen. And God doesn't want us to go backwards. He wants to press forward. So loose the caboose. <laughs> I hope that helps you out, Amy. That was okay. good, Apostle. Thank you. All right. So let's move on. We, um, I, I wanted to embrace, um, um, hallelujah, Second Peter, the th- uh, third chapter, Pastor. Okay. I know this is a lot, people, and this is like a series that needs to be done. And, and, and uh, Pastor, we always, um, we don't address things long enough. We, I think when we start addressing the mind, we can't, Rome was not built in a day. Right. But if we could somehow be a Frankenstein, uh, a Mr., uh, you know, and, and I say that not as the monster, but if we could really start tapping into your brain, your mind, so you can sit down and see where you're at and understand that your growth has not been as it should be. Right. And, and that's the problem. Most of our success, most of our finances, where we're going, even in relationship, is because we have not grown up yet. Yeah. So here's what it says in Second Peter three, um, third chapter. Uh, it tells us to grow in grace. Mm-hmm. You want to read that for us? Yes, I think sir. We're going to start at the verse eighteen. Eight, eighteen. Yes. Okay. Oh, hang on here. For some reason, let me pull it because I I see um, something looks like it's not right. Hang on. Well, I'll read it. It's. It's in uh, it's in Second Peter three and eighteen. This is the NIV, where the Apostle Paul encourages believers. He says, "But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ." It's embarrassing, Pastor Corey. Mm-hmm. It's embarrassing, people. I want to cry right now. It's embarrassing when y'all when we keep saying we are growing in the Lord, we're growing in the knowledge of God, but we still act simple. We still are immature. We still are silly. We still think like an outsider. Right. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for the kingdom. It's embarrassing for the Lord. It's embarrassing. Come on, y'all. Bear with me. Bear witness with me. Give me so say something. Amen. Put something in the comments that you agree. It's embarrassing when the body of Christ acts like, you know, it's acting childish. It's it's embarrassing. And so he says. Whether people, uh, he, uh, but growing grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory both now and forever. This verse underscores the idea that spiritual growth is an ongoing process that involves deepening one's understanding of God's grace, developing a closer relationship with Christ. Listen, I want to say this, Pastor Gordon. Pay close attention, people. I do have people. I've met people that have grown in the Lord, Pastor Corey. I met people, Pastor Corey, who have grown in God. And they start acting like they can't be told nothing. Mm. That's not the growth of the Lord. That's right. That's right. When you take on a position, you got to be an apostle. I got to be a prophet. Because a, a lot of people pushing people to, in callings and positions. Yeah. Um, just because you label yourself something don't mean it is something. Right. You put a whole jar of salt mm. and put the label sugar on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to stay deep, but that's, <laughs> oh my God, that's and, hilarious. And you go in, and you get a spoon, you're just looking at the label. Yeah. And you're just putting it in your car. Yeah. you yeah. just throwing it, oh, it's going to be good. Yeah. you saying it to yourself, oh, oh you man. ain't got to the third sugar thing, uh, putting the third tablespoon, teaspoon in, it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be good. And then you put pick up the, co- the coffee cup, and you say, oh! It's salty as all it's get out. salty, yeah. salty, salty. I'm just trying to show you all that some things, if we're going to grow, we grow. And we grow in the knowledge of God. We mature in the knowledge of God. That's what allows us to grow up. 
But we, a lot of us are taking on these labels, these names, and you know, but we're not, some are called a few are chosen, but we're not living it. We're not applying it, yeah. you know? And I'm not judging anyone. What, I want, what I'm trying to say is you don't need a label out of be labeled anything. Just grow. And, and the label will automatically come upon itself. But just grow in God's grace. Grow in the knowledge of God because Christian maturity, Pastor Corey, deals with the, the knowledge of God. The more Bible you read, mm -hmm. he said, rightly divide the word. The more Bible you read, the more, the more your mind and heart is going to change. You start seeing things. You believe mm -hmm. this or not, Pastor, at the age of 10 years old, between the age of 9 and 10, I was actually teaching adult Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Adult Sunday school. That's amazing. And my pastor was always putting me up, always, you know, what you, Wells, what you got to say? Tell him, Wells, you know, um, the knowledge of God is right. so important. Right. And, and, and let me tell you something. There's no adolescent knowledge of God. There's no immature knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. There's no childish knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's get that understanding. God don't act immature and childish. Right. Stop right. saying, pray for me. No, I'm not praying for you no more. <laughs> Just grow up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pray for me. No, pray for seriously, me. Seriously, some things me. can be resolved with maturity. Yes. Yeah. Instantaneously. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Instantaneously. It can be, be cured right now. Mm -hmm. We can fix this right now. Yeah. You, you know? just grow up. Me and my wife, we, we, we have conversations. Honey, we're going to fix this right now. You know, we handle this right now. Right. We ain't going to sleep on that. Right. We ain't going to sleep. We're going to fix this right now. Amen. And that's Christian maturity. Yes, sir. That's Christian maturity. Um, and then uh, the parable of the mustard seed uh, shared by Jesus in Matthew, the 13th chapter, if you get that. Yes, sir. Uh, Matthew 30, 13, 31 through 32. Uh, it conveys the notion of the, uh, the growth in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, Pastor, yet when it grows, it is the largest of, of uh, largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree. This metaphor highlights the transformative power of even the smallest beginning and the potential for significant growth in spiritual life. This is very powerful. I've seen a mustard seed. I've seen a mustard seed plant, yep. and I've seen a mustard seed tree. It's a huge, yes, sir. huge, and the seed is so small, it don't make any sense. Yeah, it's very small. So it that tells us, then I wanted to give you all the scripture uh, on Sunday, and you can pull it up for me, Pastor. Uh, the scripture says, oh, my wife, she, def she'll definitely put it up. I'm like a tree planted by mm -hmm. the rivers of the water. A, a tree, if you get that for me, a tree that is planted by the river. Let's say it's a mustard tree plant. Whatever's planted, amen. Um, I want to say this. Growth, you, 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 we're always thinking that growth starts from what's on top. But I, the real growth starts in the roots. No, you're messing with some of my messages right you now. You know? <laughs> right there in the roots. Yes, sir. That tree can, let me tell you something, Pastor. That tree can never be what it, it is to be unless mm -hmm. it is secured in the ground. Right. And soil and the foundation of it. That's what becomes it, allows it to become a, a magnificent tree. So I'm gonna be doing a teaching on that here soon. I wanna listen, call me because I'm gonna get in and get in on with you. Call me in. Yes, sir. Because that's powerful. It's powerful to understand that the little mustard seed grows up to be the biggest plant in a tree in your life. But again, Pastor, it's where the roots are. It's where that's what makes it as powerful as it, as it is. Mm -hmm. Did you know? And, and I and I and I deal in real estate a lot. I have to. Um, I've I've had to go in some properties that I've purchased. I've had to remove trees. Now check this out, people of God. The trees that I had to remove were so huge. They were tall, and they was, you know, some of the branches fell on the house mm -hmm. and fell on the ground, and. And, and, and that's one thing, you know, being able to see, Pastor Corey, what I can address on the outer side of the book. But I went to one house, and the roots had become so strong and so powerful, it lifted the cement. Oh, I believe you. I've seen that before. It lifted the cement. Mm -hmm. That's how strong roots are. Yeah. You understand? Yes, sir. And so what, what I'm trying to get people to understand is when you get the knowledge of God, think of it as Getting that word in you, what well, it will automatically change the upward part or the out, outward, outward part of that plant or tree. 
But it all starts in the roots. If the roots die, Pastor, if the roots die, this this thing above mm -hmm. is going to die. But if you can keep that root alive and watered and 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 and, and, and uh, taken care of, so that truth, the Bible says, um, and he sh and he shall be in, in in Psalms one and three, yep. and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. Yes, sir. It's because of the roots. The roots is what's keeping that tree intact. Mm -hmm. And once that tree falls over from the roots, it's God. <clears throat> it's God. Yep. Listen, uh, check this out. A tree needs water to keep growing. Am I right? Yes, sir. Too much water. Or will kill it. Or kill it. Yep. Or make it tilt. Yep. You understand? Yep. So everything, watch this, people of God have to be proportionally done just right for your growth. That's good. That's for your good growth, apostle. For your growth, people of God. So, you know, don't get too high above yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't take too much of this and try to be this or that. Too much of that will stunt your growth, will cause you to be, amen, or, or put you back in a position that you need not to be put in. Right. Amen? Right, amen. Hallelujah. And so um, we talked about this spiritual plant. Uh, in Ephesians 4 and 15, Pastor. Yes, sir. Get I want that. people to know that we give the Bible. This is Bible. This is, this is not coming off of our, you know, us just saying this. This, this is Bible. The Apostle Paul emphasizes in the uh, uh, fourth chapter of Ephesians, the 15th and 16th verse, the Apostle Paul emphasizes the importance of growth in the Christian community. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become, in every respect, the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This passage illustrates the in, uh, in, in interconnectionist of believers in their collective growth, functioning as a unified body with Christ as the head. We can't get there, Pastor, by ourselves. Right. We need each other. Yes, sir. We need each other. And when people start isolating themselves from everyone or from the body of Christ, you're not going to get the growth that you need. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. My, my dad, I'm with him all the time, my spiritual father. And, I mean, he's pouring and pouring and pouring. And I, I'm able to get something in. He said, oh, man, I got something from that. I, I, I'm able to give him something, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but we we allow that spirit of, of talking to each other, ministering to other i don't say he's from the old school or he's coming up with this new thing i listen he has yeah. heaven here let him hear, hear. Yes, sir. so i i'm not only but but i move from pastor as the paul said i move from a hearer to being a doer, doer. Yes, sir. yes sir that's one of our main things a lot of us don't know how to be doers we know how to be mm -hmm. hearers mm -hmm. uh me and pastor sierra was talking about how um people come to church every sunday but they never have a pad or a pencil yeah you know, yeah. they never have, they're not saying, but I did, Pastor, when I went to church, I had a pad. Oh. Listen, I walked into church with a briefcase, and people said, who does Negro think he oh, is, you know? Some of my stuff. I got notebooks just still, yes, you I, know, from the years. I walked in with a notebook, and when I went home, I studied what mm -hmm. Pastor preached about. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And I said, I got to apply this teaching. Uh, uh, listen, he'd be up there preaching and sweating and, and you know, falling out and oh, just going, and I'm going to go home and act like this man didn't exhaust himself, didn't, you know, all that pouring out, and I don't go home. That's disrespectful. Right. That's disrespectful. We need an hour of the day. People, you need an hour of a day of the day, amen, to study what you've been taught on Sunday and Tuesday. Take a minute, take an hour, and cut everything off. You know, when I cut my phone off, and, I, and, and I'm beginning to do it a little bit more now than I used to do, and I, and I tell my administrator and my wife, y'all, you know, and sometimes I say, Bishop, you know, you take over being the overseer, the head overseer, the apostle, for, because I need that time. I need that time yeah. of study and meditation and in prayer. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. So um, we have to grow. We need the body pastor to grow. 
All of us need each other. Sometimes you minister, I'm getting some nuggets from you. Sometimes I'm ministering, you're getting some nuggets from me. Yes, sir. And stop acting like we ain't getting them from each other. Right, right. We get from each other. It's exactly. A, and that's the beautifulness. Iron of sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. That's yes, what the sir. Bible says. Yes, sir. We, I love it when we get from each other, you know. And stop thinking that we the only ones got this revelation. <laughs> I'm the only one to have the revelation. Man, grow up. <laughs> grow up. We grow together. And if we don't, the, the body becomes as it was disa dis dis disabled or dysfunctional. Pastor, your churches are bipolar and schizophrenia because in your church, and I'm talking about spiritual bipolarism, po uh, spiritual schizophrenia, uh, because you're still in an infant stage. Right. You never lead the child or the body part in the way that it should it should have went. Right. Sometimes, pastors, we pay attention to one part of the body and ignore the rest, mm. which cripples the said parties of the body. Sometimes we pay attention to the people who do listen to us, who do follow what we say. Right. We see a little growth. Now, okay, we've taught, we got them. Yeah. Why, got why is it that we we yield to them, encourage them, mm -hmm. pull up? But you haven't your gift. Use your gift. Your gift. Listen, this person that follows, they were applicable, or rather, they, it was much easier for them. To get it, they, right. there are people that you know. There's people that you can teach or minister to. They just have that ability to absorb and right. and, 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 and and follow. You right. understand? Right. But then you got those that are rebellious, and not only yeah. rebellious, but you have those who it's, it's a little harder for them. Correct. You know. Correct. And, and some of them, and I remember I used to tell you, I said, Pastor Corey, you got to rebuke that them spirits, rebuke yeah. them devils, yes, rebuke sir. them people. You know, yes, rebuke sir. them. And um, so when we do that, we gotta get on that side. Mm -hmm. Stop. Pastors, y'all need to stop being on this side. Get on the other side. Yes, sir. And guess what? Let, let's see what kind of gifts you got, Pastor. Yes, sir. Let's see <laughs> what kind of anointing you have, yeah. Pastor. Because now you're dealing with a rebellious, stiff-necked individual, but God has gifted you. I preached a message That's the key. 20, about 20 years ago in, in H, uh, Holy Bible Christian Ministries Church. Um, have I reached you? Yeah. Because I was sitting there, and I was reaching certain people in the church, mm -hmm. but I wasn't reaching others, and I Love those people that I reached. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you know what I did? I, I started telling the people that I reached, sit back there. And the people that I didn't reach, y'all come to the front. Yeah. Amen. And I made it my I made it my business to be able to reach. Now, guess what? Some people don't like to be in the front. Mm -hmm. So they started grabbing hold. Okay, okay, I got it now. Mm -hmm. I got, oh, oh, can I move back to the third? Right. Oh, okay, we'll move you back to the third or fourth row now. But right now, you head to the front. Because I need to what? Reach, Reach you. you. Yep. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor, use your gift. Stop closing off or disconnecting with the people who you haven't reached. Let's see if you got the gift that God called you for. Let's see if you God did really ordain you to do the job that you're doing. By using your gift to reach that person who you don't want to reach because you think it's going to be difficult. Use your gift and it won't be difficult. Right. But if you use your flesh, it is difficult. Right, right. I hope that helps some of y'all pastors out. That no, that's me. that's that's good, possibly, and 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 um, it just a deeper dive into what we've been called. The gift that you're speaking of comes from God. Comes from God. So if we don't go back to the gifter, then we use the gift incorrectly. That's right. And that's what happened with um, uh, Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses had a gift that God cultivated in him mm -hmm. but when moses got beside himself and got frustrated and got into his flesh got back to pharaoh that yeah, exactly <laughs> the same thing that god used to get him to free the people out of pharaoh's grip mm -hmm. right he mm -hmm. became that that's right being frustrated with israel that's right when god said speak to the rock mm -hmm. he smote it that's right he hit it but out of anger that's right he went back to pharaoh yeah that anger that Pharaoh had, the, the, the thoughts and how Pharaoh acted and mm -hmm. how Pharaoh went about doing things, that's what we do. We mm -hmm. go back to where we came from. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, He only went back. Where did he go back? He went back to Pharaoh. He went, went back to his Pharaoh mentality, mm -hmm. his Pharaoh ways. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what caused that hindrance. You right. understand? Right. Now, here's what the Bible said. Uh, here's what I told you all on Sunday. Children may never grow up because they have never seen their parents grow up. Wow. That's what I said. The Lord spoke to me. And he says, the reason why children never grow up because they never see their parents grow up. That's good. They have actually seen you do the same thing all your life. If you smoke pot, they smoke pot. They become weed heads. If you fought your spouse, they grow up fighting their significant other, mm. lovers, or friends. Are you listening, people? This is good. This is some good stuff. This is good. 
They, they, they do it at school because when you live in a house full of chaos, your life is chaos. Even those that are in prison, they go in childish and come out degressed. They're no, they don't, Pastor, they don't, they're not any, any better when they come out of jail. They said that jail is for a rehabilitation. Um, it's supposed to help you. But they don't get that, Pastor. They, 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 they become, they come out of jail worse. Oh. They know, they, yeah. You know, the jail system is supposed to help you transform. But instead, the chaos that's in the jail, the, the uh, monarchy of, yeah. uh, and anarchyism of them fighting over who's, you know, white people saying that we're the in charge, or yeah. black people saying we're in charge, or different groups saying that they're in charge, or they're doing this and they're doing that. How do you grow? How do you grow? And instead of ha so people come come out of jail not being rehabilitated. Uh, and, I, and as I said on Sunday, it's, uh, prison is like a, a dog pound for unwanted, disobedient men and women. Mm -hmm. The state of that man is worse than when he came, you know, before he got, yeah. you know, before he got out. So yeah. we, we, our children are not growing, you know, because they see the parent. They're in the midst. And this is not always, but I want to tell you 70% of it is because parents are showing no growth. Right. When you see that your parents wants to be successful, my daughter, uh, Sierra, wanted, saw me being successful. She saw me growing to be successful. She wanted to be successful. Right. I was teaching success. But some of my children were so spoiled mm -hmm. that they did not follow that path. Mm -hmm. They did not follow that path. Mm -hmm. You know, but you, you thank God for the two or the three yes, that, you know, that was able to see success and be successful. And so what are you giving to your children? What are you showing your children? Are you showing your children that you move from one man to another man and that's what your life was all about? All right. You didn't show them college. You didn't show them any schooling. You didn't show them the dynamics of going to uh, doing something better or greater. You showed them folly and foolishness. Yeah. So now you want to know why, amen, they don't respect you. Mm -hmm. You want to know why they don't see you as a hero. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And, 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 and when your child makes more than you, has a better dream and vision than you, Man, you need to, you need to, you need to, you need to get yeah. it together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You need to absolutely. get it together because, yeah. amen, I've always inspired to be better than my mother and better than my father. Yeah. I want my children to be the same way. I want my daughter to be the same. I want you to be the same way. Right. Be better than me. Be greater than me. You know, get more than me. Have more than me. And I'm going to back you up and support you and, and encourage you. Because guess what? That is the way it's supposed to be. Correct. Because when I get about 75, hello somebody, or 80, I want my children to take care of me. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. It, it reverses. You take care of the child, mm -hmm. now the child is taking care of you. Right. You understand? Right. But Christian maturity is where it needs to be. Yes, sir. We, we got to get you to that, to, 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 to grow up in your mind and in your heart. Go ahead, Pastor. No, this is good, Apostle. And, and I think that... Um, what you're saying is, is definitely key, um, especially when it comes down to, you know, this generation and their relationship with God. So the millennials, it kind of split. We got to the point where a lot of us were still being made to go to church. And then we got some of those millennial parents, those millennials parents who decided, eh, you know, I'll let you choose. Mm -hmm. So that half that were just, you know, let them choose began to, put that out on the children, which now is the generation we have now who knows almost nothing mm -hmm. about right. relationship with God, knows nothing about prayer, knows yeah. nothing about salvation, knows nothing about church Church in <laughs> yeah, general. Church, no church. And, 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 and I think a lot of them probably think of church, especially with what they're seeing online, as like a, like a, like a concert. Yeah. They, they think of it as a pr production, not as a gathering that God has actually called together. So what I'm alluding to is back to, well, my mom didn't really value church, so why should I? Exactly. My dad wasn't valuing church, so why should I? They didn't value prayer, why should I? They didn't value scripture, why should I? They didn't value tithing and giving into the ministry, why should I? They didn't value attending, why should I? So the value there has been destroyed because the value hasn't been established in the home. Uh -huh. And when the value is not established in the home, then you leave them to whatever. And unfortunately, we're seeing that play out even today, every day. We're seeing that play out. Um, My mother took me to church. Right. But would not come to church. There, there, was never, there was never apostle 
the idea on Sunday morning that you could stay home. I don't even know what that feel like. <laughs> you, yeah, because you're a PK kid. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a GPK kid. But that's right. But again, it's still like even today, like on a, on a Sunday, if if I'm not getting up and going, it don't. It's something about it. My mind has not resonated with. Like, there's been a few Sundays where I didn't go to church, like physically go to church. But then it just was like, what am I supposed to do today? <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. But growing up, I didn't have the idea in my mind, like, oh, I, 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 I don't, I, I, I don't have to go. Right. That's it was right. never a thought, right. Right. you know. But that's what they instilled in that's us. Right. Yeah. These children look at it as an option, right, to serve God, to know God. But you have the same thing that uh, my wife testifies about. Like y'all was going, mm -hmm. but the parent wasn't really there. The parent wasn't going. And the thing was, um, but but you know what? It was God. Mm -hmm. You know, God set it up. You know, even though the parent wasn't going, God said, "Well, I'm still going to use him." Right. I'm still going to use just like her. David. Right. Just like David. I'm still going to use him, whether you like it or yep. not. So she had the will that was placed in her. The spirit of the Lord was, but she couldn't kick against the bricks. She was. It was placed in her mind and her spirit. She took me to the church. Mm -hmm. That one day she took me to church. Something happened to me. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And so, guess what? Now, uh, I became the first preacher in my siblings, and within my sibling, then my sister became a preacher. Now, my little brother is a preacher. Wow. And now, and, and so there's only one that's not. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, and, uh, and the, him and mom hang together, yeah. you know? <laughs> but I think I'm that on both sides of my family. I'm the only minister. I believe so far uh -huh. on both sides in my generation on right. both sides. I don't right. think, I don't think there's another one. It can't. Uh, no. Well, well, it's, you got to start extending past the family, but like my me, yeah, you got to get into like the first seconds and thirds right, and all right. that. I'm talking about the first level. There's mm -hmm. nobody else. Yeah. I think I found out I had a cousin uh, that was a uh, woman preacher. She was a woman preacher. I met her too. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, again, um, God has called us, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, our job, people, as you, as an apostle, is take the message to the world. That's right. Uh, for, for, for you to change and uh, for, so that you can, we're preaching that there may be food for the both of us, but we're also preaching so that you could be a, live a better life. This is not a, the USA life. This is not an American dream life. We're talking about a life that is centered around the Holy Spirit. Right. Letting God lead us and guide us in direction. So, Pastor Corey, I can't hang, I can't hang with people. Uh, who don't appreciate my friendship mm -hmm. with the Lord? I've I've had to learn that the hard way. Yeah, yeah. I've had to learn that the hard way. I've uh, at one point kind of established a tolerance for it, and then it got to the point where you know you start to see the reasons why you're unequally yoked, right, right, and why you can't walk together, right, why right. you can't build together in that capacity. So for me, I had to learn that the hard way. Um, now I've embraced this. There is a true separation between you and I <laughs> when it comes down to this. And, yeah, yeah. and we're and not going to mix well. There's nothing to feel bad about. Correct. You yeah, know, yeah. I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad at all. Yeah. Because now you, have, uh, now you have a goal mm -hmm. to get to a certain area in your life by watching my life. Yeah. So let your life so sign up and we'll see you grow and grow fine. So now you can say, okay, well, I want to get there. But now by the time you get where I'm at, I, I done went a little further. Right. You understand? Know right. But um, you just making it to the first heaven. I'm at right. like five, six, <laughs> right. and seven you know, already. But I can't associate or hang out or deal with those who are not, have not embraced, right. you know, my, uh, where, uh, you know, who I am, what I'm doing, what I serve, what I believe. Right. It's, it's okay. Right. It's right. okay, people. Right. It's okay to tell some family members I'm going to have to disconnect from you for a mm -hmm. bit. Give me about a year. I'll come back, you mm -hmm. know, because hanging with y'all, dealing with y'all is is, is, is is hindering my salvation. Mm -hmm. And my salvation is very important Correct. You know, to me. And and you're going to have people That's talk so about good. you and scandalize you and say this, but it, it, my salvation is very important to me. You know, go ahead, Pastor. I, I just that what I gotta ask you why you sit, sitting here. And people of God, don't be afraid to ask. We say this all the time. The apostle, when he's here, you should be asking questions. Sure, <laughs> you should be asking questions. But I'm gonna take the opportunity since y'all don't want to. But apostle, with what you see, your viewpoint, you've traveled several states, you've been around the world, you've why, and especially here in in America, I would say specifically. But why don't people take their salvation seriously? Like I'm talking about people. Well, let's not even say they have salvation. Just in general, why do you think people not take salvation seriously? 
It's basically as, as, as where they came from. Mm-hmm. You see, if, if you were in a church that didn't teach salvation mm-hmm. or minister concerning salvation, mm-hmm. you, you can't take it serious. You can't take it serious what you don't know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, when, and, and so there are two ways that you take your, your, your so when you adapt it to what you've been taught. Yeah. You know, yeah. and people, you know, when they, you know, when you come into the church and, and all they talk about is salvation and, and take on Christ, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. and then talk about something, you're going to get, you're going to be, you're going to be more apt to do that as well as you minister to other people. Mm-hmm. Now, or something have to happen to you through the name called Jesus, through, through the blood of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Jesus stepped into your life and that's what he, that's what he dealt with. Right. Salvation. Right, right. You understand? And three, <clears throat> did you get saved? Did, did what? How did salvation, or how did your salvation impact your mind, your heart, your spirit, your life? Those are the three things right there. And so, um, a lot of people don't address salvation or deal with salvation because, again, like I said, one, they they they, they didn't come from a church. Right. That all they came from a church had a, a, a dynamite choir, you know, uh, had a, a, a the deacon board and, and the white the women in white and the women, that was all they was that was what they you know gravitated to and that's what they flowed in but have you ever noticed pastor because you you came from one of these uh uh, religious backgrounds Mm -hmm. or or doctrines um churches that um did y'all have outreach like an outreach team that would go out have tent services revival cool crusades trying to get people saved no you know so my experience growing up was um less specifically it wasn't as out, it was more in. Once you got in, mm-hmm. then we got to work. It wasn't really. So you told your family members about it, right? So that's why your church became a family church, correct? Because everybody was telling their family and come to the fa- family and friends, right? Uh, right. Come to uh, you know uh, the the tea. What do they call that thing? Or, um, it's some type of tea. I know somebody go put it in the comments. Yeah, uh, but it was always something that they tried to draw you to come mm-hmm. into, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, but see, my, my experience was this, you know, it's not the same anymore, uh-huh. but growing up, uh, coming out of the church of God in Christ, it was a, it was a huge name, brand name. You put that on the back of any name of your church. It was almost a drawing card back then. So <clears throat> we didn't have to, you know, this is nationally, internationally, statewide, all right. that. We didn't really have to, you know, tell people, oh, come to our church. Once you just kind of already established the church of God in Christ in that area, it was almost a drawing card sometimes. So outreach kind of got when my experience was outreach happened when something major on the, on the calendar was coming up. Okay. It wasn't like a consistent ministry. But was that uh, outreach and salvation or outreach and just trying to get, get people to come, to come. come to the program? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't evangelism. Right. It what you're talking about, evangelism. That's right. I'm not, about evangelism. not that strong. Not that yeah, strong. It was just uh, introducing people to the church, yeah. having them come to the church mm-hmm. for the program. Right. Correct. But true salvation. We had programs for everything. Right. And true salvation entails really t- teaching people about Christ. Yeah how he came to save your life, how right. he, he died on the cross for your sins. Right. We didn't get that in our churches. Now, right. when I started my first church, that's what I did. Right. I, I realized that. And that not, that's not to, to uh, take from the Church of God in Christ. And I want to say, too, that was my worldview of mm-hmm. how things went. That's right. not every church. There were some ch- churches that definitely got out and did mm-hmm. it. But mm-hmm. it generally but when they wasn't did it, that well, How did you feel when they did it? You know, did you did you say to yourself, "Why don't we do that?" Or did you say, "Oh, they doing too much"? You know, no, I, I can't. Re- you know, I can't remember. Um, my, I'm gonna be honest with you. My experience with evangelism didn't come from the church of God in Christ or my home church as uh-huh. strong. Uh-huh. My experience with evangelism was when I went to church with my friends mm-hmm. who were more Caucasian based. Uh-huh. And I tell you that uh, I'm saying this very frankly, but. Two different worlds. One, I come from a Pentecostal background, everything loud and da 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 You know, it's, mm-hmm, it's that. Mm-hmm. They come from a more calm, but they were some of the most bold people when it came down to getting in the streets and getting in the face of strangers and people that don't profess faith. Or So I learned it. We were at the doggone lakes and rivers. They were doing baptism and all yes. kinds of stuff. They were out there, mm-hmm. and they were inviting people in, and they were, they were reachable. They were attainable. Mm-hmm. I didn't really have that experience growing up it was more or less let's get to church let's go to church sunday let's go to church friday night let's go to bible study and, and if we got visitors 
it was like, oh, great, we got some new folks. Right. But it wasn't like we went out and got them. But the scripture says uh, that we're to go to the hedges and highways it's, and we're to compel it's, men and women to come in. Yeah. The Bible also says to convince the gangs here. So it always, I always wondered, mm -hmm. we, we, you know, in, in the Pentecostal apostolic churches, we're missing something here, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And then when I became a pastor, my church, I, you know, I that was it was a mandate mm -hmm. that you go to the hedges and highways, that you minister to people, um, and that you. You know, salvation was very important, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, even when we raised funds, we said, well, do you know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, you know? So um, I, I said that to say this. Um, true salvation brings conviction. Right. And allows you to see, amen, there's some areas in my life mm -hmm. that I need to grow up in. Mm -hmm. There's some areas. And, 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 and not playing church or not doing this thing religiously, mm -hmm. but doing it because I really need to do this. Mm -hmm. I, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If I need to, if I, if I, if I want to, become this or become that if I want to go further in my life ideas let me let me just let me just go around the corner right ideas what uh, success in my life came from the ideas or things that Christ placed in my spirit right but it came from pastor Christian maturity it came from maturity you see God will not give you no more mm -hmm. than you can bear mm -hmm. but also at the same time if God will bless you and he will open up doors for you when he knows that you can handle it. Right. Now, on Sunday, I showed an example. Mm -hmm. And if you if you would go back, people of God, and listen to the message on Sunday, it's a little long. Amen. So you might have to do 45 minutes and then take a break and come back to it. You know. Amen. But what we did is we showed the, the talent. The man gave five talents, two talents, and one yeah. talent. Right. What I wanted to emphasize, Pastor, and the person that gave two talents is that he didn't get five talents. Right. He got two. He got two, yeah. Because that's all he could handle. Mm -hmm. Come on now. That's right. But that's thank, what the Bible says. But thank be to God. He got two. He got two. That's right. He wasn't He wasn't left out. You Correct. Know what I'm then you had a man who got five talents. Mm -hmm. Okay? Five talents. And when he received his talents back, mm -hmm. he gave it to the to the, to the the owner and said, hey, hey I, I got you five more he said, thank you. He said, you've, uh, you, uh, you've been faithful. I'm going to make you rule over many things. Yep. The same came with it. Now, check this out. The man who had the two talents. Did the same thing. He gave the same speech. He said, you've been faithful over a few things. Mm -hmm. I'll make you rule over many things. Yep. You understand? Yep. The one that had the one who said, you, you hit my money. Are you stupid? What is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. He gave that one talent, not to the man who had the two talents. He gave it to the man who had, the, man had the five talents yep. because this man can handle talents. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Amen. He can handle more talents mm -hmm. than the man who had the two. Mm -hmm. Now, that showed me, that, now listen to this. That showed me something. There are people in your life who can float in five talents. Yeah. Or handle a lot more, right. and let's just say there are people who are masters of being able to multitask. Right. Which one are you? You are you a multitasker where you can handle five different things, right. then take on something else? You understand? Mm -hmm. Or only are you someone who can only master two things? Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 you'll be faithful. I'll, I'll faithful of a few. I'll make you rule over many. But if you can't handle nothing, you're gonna end up being. Nothing. Right. You understand? Know right. Let's say each talent was worth let's say let's say each talent and they do give you the value. You can look it up in the scriptures. Yeah. But let's just say the talent was worth one million dollars. Mm -hmm. You you're working on a job. You're working on a job. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna show you two different two different positions. You're working on a job, you worked on that job and made that man rich. Mm -hmm. He then comes back to you and say, Here's your here's a million dollars. Yep. And you can take this million dollars, start your own company, and you don't have to work for me no more. Right. The, the man who had the two talents, okay, thank you, but get back to work. Yeah. That's that man. He's getting back to work. He, now, he didn't get that extra talent he did not. to start his own business. Right. But the man who had the five talents, he got it. Now he can take make a choice. Ooh, God help us. Yes, sir. He can make a choice now. Mm -hmm. He can say, I can continue to work for this merchant. Mm -hmm. Or he gave me a million dollars to start my own company. Yes, sir. Because if I could do it for him, I, I can, can do, do it, it for, for myself. Me. Yep. Yep. The That's man good. who had the two talents, he was a worker in society. He worked for the government. I, you know, he, he did this, he did that. But he was so he good. did not get that that first that I never talent. thought about this like that. But you're right. The guy that started off with the five, mm -hmm. he he 
doubled it, yeah. just like the man with two. Mm-hmm. But the capacity was different. Yes. He doubled it, brought right. back five more. That's right. The guy that did the two brought back two more. They both doubled it, right. but the one had the more capacity mm-hmm. to handle. And at the end of it, he got the one extra. The extra. So he walked away with more. While you just mentioned, That's the other right. guy had to go back to the reality of That's right. back to square one. And, and, and people do it. Every, I never look at it like that. People do it every day. Yeah. Every day on your job, they, they, they're robots. Wow. They go. That's good. They help. Listen, the man in the second help. We always helping someone else's company. Mm-hmm. Building their dream. Building their dreams. Sending their, their children to school. That's right. Yep. And we do it. But the man who had the five talents. He decided, I'm pretty sure he decided, I hope he decided, okay, boss, <laughs> I'm done. I'm ready to start my own. Or my own he, thing. because he had the the knowledge, the wisdom, and the skill, he may now go teach that to someone else, mm-hmm. then who can do this same thing. That's right. Or right? he could have said, boss, now let me take my one million and connect it with yours. Right. And let's make I some I want to invest with you. Right. And yep. let's make some more money. Yep. But he had the choice had and choice. the opportunity. Yep. That is correct. Yeah. But now, now let's go to the merchant. And this is found in Matthew, the 15th chapter. I'm um, 5th chapter. I'm sorry, 5th chapter. You can put that up. Yes, um, uh, let's also talk about the merchant, though, Pastor Corey. And we're going to be ending here. Matthew let, 5? Yes, okay. I believe it is. Um, let's talk about the, let me make sure that it's in Matthew 5. No, I think, you know what I think? Uh, five. It was 15, wasn't it? Or 20, was it? 20. I think it was 25. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, because we, we, we were trying We to went there Sunday, but yeah, I, I think yeah. you end up being 25. 25, that's right. Yeah. The 25th verse? Hang on. Uh, on the 25th chapter. We're going to bring it bring on to the TDP Bible because we want you to uh, go home and we want you to get your knowledge of that study of what yep, happened. This is it. Uh, Matthew uh, 25. The 14. 14? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Matthew uh, 25 and 14. Okay, I got it. Now, I want to say this part, Pastor, because me and you, we broke down the other part. We gave revelation to it, right? Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about the merchant. Now, the merchant um, had had the business. He he had the money. He, he had what it took to allow them to get what they needed to get to allow it to prosper, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. But let's think of him. Let's think the reason why you have not beca- become a supervisor or well, the reason why you have become a manager, because the person who is in charge of you have not seen a mature growth in you. Mm-hmm. So as you can see, hello somebody, if you go back to the one, what's the name, uh, who gave him one talent, he gave him one because he really didn't know what he could do. Mm-hmm. So he gave him one. He says, now go, and, and let Pascal, he says, he says, the man says, I took and hid your talent. That's crazy. You, you took and hid a million dollars? You hid my... So the merchant is frustrated. God is frustrated that he's given you gifts and talents and you have hid them. And you, you, you have knowledge and you won't flow in it. You won't act in it. So let's look at the merchant, Pastor Corey, and let's say, why didn't God, oh, why didn't God give me, why does God, why did God, why didn't the merchant give me five? Why didn't he give me three? Why did he, because God knows us, mm-hmm. and he's not going to give us no more than we can bear. That's right. So that's why you are in a spirit of stagnant stagnation. You are, you you're just in one position. You've 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 moved nowhere. You've gotten nowhere because God knows you can't handle it. Aren't you? Don't come. Oh, I, I gotta close with this. Holy Spirit is speaking. You need to learn how to deal with some things. How to? You gotta grow up. You got to grow up. You got to get more mature. You got to get more knowledgeable. You got to be more revelational. You got to be follow your leader. You got to get under leadership. You got to uh, be taught. You got to be, t- be able to be taught. You got to be able to get the knowledge. Some of y'all are working for the same company, 
and you, you've been working for them, whether it's been the government, whether it's been whoever it may be, but and you're you're content, you're you're satisfied because you're not content, you're satisfied, and God has more than enough. He has a different vision. He he has a different destiny for you. So why are you still doing the same thing that you was doing three years ago? Why? 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 And you have not excelled. You should be writing a book. You should be doing a new business. You should be, but you can't do none of this stuff unless you can multitask. But to be able to be multitaskable, you have to be mature. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to grow up. You're going to have to grow up. Man, I know some of y'all, this is like a screwdriver, and we're still screwing. We're just still screwing. We're still screwing. And, and it's a fill-up. It ain't a flathead. It's a fill-up. And we're still screwing. Listen. Ladies, that's the one with the four four corners. Huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> but God wants to. I love the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. I love God because I saw, you don't even have to have a degree, Pastor Corey. Yeah. You don't have to have a master's or a bachelor's. You don't even have to have an associate's. Um, the songwriter said, God is with us, so let the church say amen. Yes, sir. If God is with you, um, if God, he said, the scripture said, if God before us, who can be against us? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If, if, if God is for you, you're going to turn out to be very wealthy, very successful, because God got your back. But you got to surrender. Mm -hmm. You got to surrender. And you got to confess. And you got to give up a few things. You got to let some stuff go. So that you can get to the place where God wants you to be. So, it's time for you to grow up. Amen. It's time for you to grow up. Because when you grow up, you, you'll keep growing, and you'll keep growing, and you'll keep growing, and you'll keep growing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this study um, on this coming Sunday. I mean, this, I'm sorry, this coming Saturday um, on my broadcast, D.O. Wells Ministries. I want you to come on over, be with us. Amen. And we're going to finish this study. I thank God for Pastor Corey Amen. and Pastor Sierra. Thank you, Apostle. Um, Y'all tow that church up Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the live stream uh, cut um, before they, the, that you all could see what took place, which was probably a good thing, actually. Listen, but uh, that's yeah. what the word is supposed to do. Yeah. The word is supposed to, when we get a word, we're supposed to worship and praise God for the word. It shows, it shows a, a Christian maturity. And I want you to know, people, after I finished preaching, after the enemy attacked me and attacked me, I was so wore out. I said, Pastor Corey, here, do, take it from here. He got behind me, and God moved in that place like never before. Because, see, the word is quick, and it's powerful. It, you could tell through the shouting and the praise that it was regulating people's minds. They were like, I'm about to grow up. I'm about to get myself together. The way to do that, Pastor Corey, is go to, you know, you got to plan your strategic attack or your plan, plan, uh, plan your uh, plan your progress. Yep. So when I was young, Pastor, I would go to Office Depot or Staples or whichever it was during that time. I would buy me pads and some pencils and some highlighters. You know, I would get a ruler. I, I mean, I was, I was, I was advantageous about, I was, I said, I, I got to grow. I must grow in the Lord. I must grow in the Lord. Then I got a little briefcase that was carrying to the church. They said, well, who do you think he is? You know? <laughs> but when I got up there to preach, they knew. And then people started patterning themselves after my study. I would always have a, a, a book, something like this, mm -hmm. and I was always looking. After a while, all the ministers started coming in with a book. You know? But um, not, to, not trying to be boastful or trying to, to uh, toot my own horn. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying... You gotta be keep growing yes. and growing. Aspiration, right? That's right. And if, if, and if, if look, I got an iPad now. Here's my iPad. Yes, sir. So sometimes I put this on my iPad. But mm -hmm. guess what? I will I will put this on my iPad. I will send it to my iPad from my computer. I'll send it to my iPad just in case I left this behind. Because the enemy, man, he's busy. Yes, sir. And there have been times I left this behind. I said, thank you, Jesus. I, 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 I emailed it to myself right. so I can bring it up. Sometimes I left the iPad behind and still had the notebook. You understand? So um, we, 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 we got to keep growing. We got to actually uh, check our life and um, examine our and make sure that we are growing. Mm -hmm. And don't let growing get, get give you the big head either. Right. Don't let growing give you the big head. You know, we grow in grace. You understand? That's what Peter was saying. We grow in grace and the knowledge of God. And so 
Grow people. Grow yeah. because it's going to change your finances. It's going to change your marriage. It's going to change your... Uh, I, there are husbands and, and wives that are going through situations right now because one of the... Look, one of the adults don't want to change. The wife wants to change, but the husband don't want to change. The husband want to change, but the wife don't want to change. And they battling... They can't be told nothing. They're battling. They don't want to. They ain't doing this. It's a, it's a mess. It is a mess. Yes, sir. But it comes from Christian maturity. You're immature, and and start accepting it, brothers. Brothers, if your wives are excelling you, excelling you, or they flowing, except you have not grown up yet. Yeah. Say, hey, I gotta grow up. I have got to grow up. I got to get to the next level. Yes. Then you get on the same level with them on the equalism, and then y'all can. Do this thing together. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Man, people of God, let us praise God for the word of God. We're getting ready to pray. May prophesy here a little bit, but we're getting ready to uh, close out. But the Lord God has given a word tonight to challenge you, to challenge us, to challenge the house to come up and excel and grow. And I don't know about you, but... I want to see growth. We want to see growth. It's essential for us to see growth. And I'll take it a step further, Apostle. The reason we talk and say uh, growth, development, and maturity, the way I, I teach that is if you are not growing, if you are not maturing, and if you're not developing, you're dead. Dead. Life Zombie. has ended. Zombie. Yeah. Life, life is completely over if there is no more growth for you maturity for you or development for you that that's it that's you, you might as well just throw in the throw in the towel and call it a quits because if there is no opportunity to grow you anymore then there is no capacity for you to even withhold anything you know and you see those zombie movies mm -hmm. that's what you're doing mm -hmm. you're just yep <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, like, you've been shouting like that. You know what I was thinking about? Uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. Um, let me try to look it up real quick. It was on Netflix. Uh, just for quick reference, I don't know what it was called. Something about was it Bird Box? When they had to keep the blindfold on, or if they looked out, they would be possessed by whatever the spirit was in the oh, earth. No. Oh, you got to watch that. Yeah, let me see let if me that see was. That. It. I think y'all know what I'm talking about. If that's the name of the movie, let me see. Yeah, it was called Bird Box, and it was with. Um, What's that lady name? I don't know. But anyways, so basically what I remember, this movie came out and it was viral. I think this came out during COVID, like in the, or probably before COVID or whatever. But basically what happened, Apostle, is there was some kind of possession in the earth that if if you didn't cover your eyes when you looked outside or went outside, it would possess you. So you had to go around blindfolded just to get around, just to, just to even manage. Or, you know, and if you looked... Like, why people were driving, if they saw that spirit, they killed themselves. Mm. They just drove themselves into a tree, or they killed other people. Like, they just was possessed. It's a wow. it's a phenomenal movie, but it, basically, they had to learn how to go about, one, navigating without being able to see everything. Right, right. So they had, to, they had to grow up and not stop being afraid. We're going to leave this place. Mm -hmm. We're going to get out of here, even if we got to go blind. And that's what the Bible tells us. It's better for you to go pluck out your eye. Mm -hmm. If you're going to come in, if, if this is holding you back, pluck it out. Pluck it out. Or the Bible says, cut, cut, it, off. cut it off. You know, well, if, if, thinking about what you just said, survival techniques. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we need to get into that survival technique mode. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Where we, um, it's survival time. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm and, at the end of my journey. I'm possible. That know? takes that takes a level of growth. Yes. because you got to strategize. Yes. yes, especially right now. That's right. So That's if right. if you're still kind of playing in the sandbox, you won't make it. Yeah, and and you know if you're hungry, you know you ever seen a a a, 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 a bum on the street? If they're hungry, mm -hmm. what do they do? They either begging from you or they diving into a trash can. Yeah, trying to get food. Yeah. They know a restaurant, they've already checked it out there. They know a restaurant, at the end of the day, yep. there's food that's going to be in there that they discarded and nobody ate. They had to take back or whatever. Listen, it's survival time. Right. Put yourself in the position of it's survival time, and I need to do whatever it takes that's to right. grow in God. That's right. Because, you, you know, and, and what my, my um, reference was, they knew they couldn't stay in that house. They were guarded for a particular time, mm -hmm. but the enemy would start to 
catch on that they were in there. Right. And even their friends who got possessed, they had to lock them in a, in a thing by themselves and let them take themselves out because, going back to Amy's thing, but because they they stopped developing, they stopped growing, they stopped maturing, they've been possessed by whatever is going on, there's no opportunity to grow them up anymore. They're possessed, they're taking over. Even God says, I'm giving them over to a reprobate, reprobate mind. mind. That's right. So I'm, 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 I'm locking a certain people up, God says. I'm locking certain people up because... I've given them enough time to know what you, to do. I'm just going to let you do what you want to do. And that's that zombie. Yeah. I'm just going to let you do what you want to do. I saw Apostle, real quick, another reference. I saw this man. Um, I won't go too deep into this. But anyways, this man who lives a certain way was teaching at the uh, the big church in Glen Arden. Mm -hmm. First Baptist, First I think. Baptist. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he was, a, he was a Sunday school teacher for 14 years. Mm -hmm. And apparently he was like homosexual or something. Or he is. But for 14 years, they let you teach. They didn't bother you until it became probably a problem. Right. But you had 14 years mm. to get yourself together. You teaching the word. You know what the word is. Just, just to get yourself together. Nobody bothered with you. Then you get on social media for this one time that somebody said, hey, you know what? We're going to have to move on from you doing this because da -da -da -da. your lifestyle and what we can actually see. Right. You get on social media and, and, and blame the church for outing you, but you didn't congratulate the church for giving you 14 years, which they didn't have to do. Sometimes we forget about the grace and we look at the punishment. Right. The grace was much more powerful right. than the one day you just got set down. Right. That's true. It is true. But it, it takes growth. It takes growth. And the, and the key thing here, people, and it's just in my spirit, the key thing is, you got to say, I keep growing. I got to grow. You gotta make up in your mind. When I passed the court, when I had my church, I always felt like I gotta make sure these people grew up. Mm -hmm. I gotta make sure that they are learning, that they're getting this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, one time, at one time, I taught Sunday school, and then I found out that some people did listen to my teaching, and they were they got it, and they got the teaching of the Word of God. I said, "Now you can teach Sunday school," mm -hmm. but it was very important to me to make sure that people were growing. If you're not growing in my church, yeah, my your your wife can tell you. If you were not growing in my church, I would dismiss you and say, "Hey, you go, you go, you go on. You know, you find somebody." People think you get mad when they leave your church. I've had people say, "Well, I can't, I can't grow no more in your church." Mm -hmm. oh, really? <laughs> you know. And instead of them telling the truth, they should have said, "I don't want to grow no more in your church." Right. You know. Um, they make it this thing, and then you you find them later, two years later, uh, a little bit later. You find them a little bit later, and they, they have not grown. You understand? They got what they wanted. That they might have taken on a new title in, in a church, or, but they, but physically, mentally, spiritually, you don't see any growth there. Right. You understand? Right. Now, I don't applaud that because I will tell them I don't see no growth in you. You left my minute. Because I don't have no enemies in the sense of when people leave my church, you left the church. Mm -hmm. You understand? You, you know, if you, left, if you left a relationship with me, then we, we might have a problem. You know, we got a relationship. But you left the ministry. That, that belongs to the Lord. Uh, but some people leave and they, they you don't see it. Or, right. or, or if you left, what did you become? What right. are you teaching? Right. Where are your followers? Right. You know, past preachers leave my church. They, make, they, show that they, 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 they get their own churches. They, they, they have aspirations. They're going to be bigger than me and greater than me and better than me. Okay, that's fine. I'll even come to your church and visit. Yeah. But when I get there, have, have, a, have 500 people in there. Have a thousand people in there. Mm -hmm. Be bigger than me. Be greater than me. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. But if you, co I come there and you got three people, you could just stay with me. <laughs> at least, at least I let you teach Sunday school and there was twenty five people in the Sunday school class. Right. right. You understand? Right. Uh, Pastor, this is the way we think. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's sad, but it's the way we think, and that's mm -hmm. what messes up. That messes us up and where we're going and our destiny. Yeah. And that causes us to be in poverty and be stricken from certain things because the way we think, Pastor. Yes, sir. That's what's killing our destiny, yes, sir. the way we think, how our immaturity. And we got to accept it. We got to confess. I'm just too immature. Yeah. I'm silly. Yeah. You know, I'm this, I'm that. You understand what I'm saying? I want, your, I want, you know, I want people to hang around. Pastor Corey will tell you, I, I normally get with him at least once when I come in town. Am I right? Yes, sir. And I say, son, let's get together. And we, I mentor him. And, you know, and, and, yeah. and we, we have quarterly. Quarterly, right. Um, 
monthly sometimes yes uh sometimes yearly some it, whatever it right. is whatever necessary see the thing and i want to say this <clears throat> the thing about that is apostle has a a great gift of and this is something we all need to learn we uh have to counsel due to the capacity so if we're having a good run it may not take as much but if we're having a, a stint where things are kind of out of place and there needs to be a little you might be seeing a weekly or bi-weekly or a monthly or it might take more right there ain't no offense to that but if that's what's needed that's what we do or if we say like my um dennis said you've been doing a good job uh -huh. we're going to take you off this plan come see me in six months right that's that means there's been some progress there's been some work on my end to gain the time it, it basically she rewarded me for my time i don't have to come as much right that's but right. if I wasn't doing a good job, mm -hmm. I'm coming back in 30 days, 60 right. days, you know. And, and the thing is, that, but Pastor Corey, there's, there's some people we don't counsel. Right. And the reason why we don't counsel is because they don't receive and they're going to be a problem. Right. You understand? Know right. Who wants to sit and argue and fight all day in a counseling session with somebody who keeps saying, no, you're wrong, you're right. wrong, you're wrong. Well, what is the point of you sitting down with me there? Right. I, I'm counseling you and ministering to you because I'm, I, I'm your advisor. Mm -hmm. I'm your counselor. Right. You understand? Right. And sometimes that's why it's good not to become so close to people because mm -hmm. they keep looking at your past or they keep looking at this or that. Mm -hmm. They can't counsel with you. Mm -hmm. And that's okay with me because I tell people, if, you, if I can't counsel, you can find somebody good. who can. It's, it's not about me having you to counsel. It's about you getting to where you need to get to that's for right. your family. I've had, mar I've had um, married folks who said, uh, uh, two married people said, well, we, I can, we can't let you counsel. We're too close to you. Okay, that's fine. You know, some people, well, that defends me. No, bruh, I counsel too many people. It doesn't offend me at all. If you yeah. can go over there to get the counsel that you need to change. Yeah. But now don't 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 go don't don't be wanting to go over there because you know you you you, you know you fear that I'm gonna bring out the truth. Mm -hmm. You fear that I have the knowledge and the wisdom mm -hmm. to take you to the next level. Right. And you really just don't wanna go to that next level. Right. Don't waste nobody's time. Don't waste the new counselor's time. Don't waste your wife's time, anybody's time. Mm -hmm. Just say you don't wanna go. Just just say you want a divorce. Just say you wanna be separated. You know, just just get out, get off the boat, uh, uh, Jonah. <laughs> just get off the boat, <laughs> you know? Yeah, just tell the truth. Yes. Yeah. No, and then that's the thing. Go because you really want that help. Yes. You really want that genuine guidance but don't you know don't not go because you know you're just trying to avoid but i like what you said too it's not about necessarily me being the counselor mm -hmm. if if i'm not the counselor it does no offense to me mm -hmm. but if you're going to get good counsel that's good go get the good counsel mm -hmm. get what you because you're gonna you listen if you're getting good counsel it's gonna show correct and and even our relationship is gonna be better correct and I'm, you know what i'm gonna tell you Keep going over Keep there. Keep going. Yeah. Then I can guarantee you, by the time they're finished with you, you're going to be ready for my counsel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you'll, be you'll, you'll be ready be for able my to handle counsel. It. That is correct. Right. You know. Right. I want to say this: there are some people. The Holy Spirit has dealt with me. There's some people out there right now. The Holy Spirit has spoken to me, and there are people who need the knowledge. They need the wisdom. The knowledge and wisdom, and these very things are what's going to make you successful. Yes. Pastor Corey, if whatever I put my hands to, it's going to grow. It's going to turn out marvelous because I'm willing to accept that God is in control. Amen. I'm willing to accept that I need to grow up in certain areas. I want to tell y'all, thank God for my daughter, Sierra, and thank God for my wife. They were two people who insisted in telling me Man of God, you've got to get organized. If you want your business to grow, you've got to get organized. And I listened to them, one having their masters, one having their, uh, well, both of them have their masters now. Um, and I'm still working on my, my, my bachelor's. But I took a minute and said, let the teacher be taught. And I listened and followed what they said. I did. And I organized the business that God has given me for the organization and God truly blessed it. I mean, he opened up the windows of heaven, poured out a blessing concerning Holy Bible Christian Ministries organization and different parts of the organization that handles certain different things. And it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. I was growing, it grew, it was growing. I was growing and it was growing. 
and I, I had it is. So, so what I, what I said is that even the teacher can be taught. If you're in a position where you need to excel and succeed, you need, and I can't begin to tell you, and they'll tell you, my daughter will tell you, my wife will tell you how much I've, how, how much I have taught them and ministered to them, and I hope they share that with you in their upcoming broadcasts. We help each other. We, we, it's, it's not about big O's and big I's and all. It's about let's take whatever we have within our family and our ministry and our organization and let's support and help one another. Right. I'm saying this, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, hey, there is about 15 people that God is saying, I'm about to take you to another level, that God is saying that if you take this message at heart, be with me on Saturday at 12 noon at DL Wells Ministries and get the next part of this study. It's going to change your life. Christian maturity, the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God is powerful. It will change. Listen, biologically it will change. It will get supernaturally, it will change you. Your whole life is going to be different and you're going to be able to take on the five talent task of being able to handle things without having a nervous breakdown. Come on here. You're going to be able to handle things without feeling like you've been overwhelmed. Yeah. Have you noticed people, I hear this a little speaking, have you noticed that people have told us and has been pushed into us that we have issues? Have you ever noticed that people diagnose us as having bipolar, schizophrenia? People are diagnosing us with all kinds of things. Yes, One, so they can get paid. Two, so they can sell medicine. But if you take a good look at it, it's all has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the spirit of rebelliousness. Right. Not being obedient to the scripture and following your leadership. Thank God for the fivefold ministry. And if you do this, 15 people, Pastor Corey, God is going to change your life and you're going to own your own business while you're working. Then you're going to give up your business. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is getting ready to bless you, Pastor Corey. Mm. He's getting ready to bless you with a new job and bless you with a new vision. Yes. He's going to take your family to another level. And this is what God is saying for you and your family. That, oh, kandaro, italarabo shataya. Don't get high-minded. Stay low. Stay low-key. Don't let everybody know your business. But God is going to bless Keep opening your mind. Keep allowing your overseer, apostle to minister to you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Don't be like other apostles. Say, I'm, a, I'm just learning. I'm a, but, when, uh, but when you're with your friends or whoever, you talk behind my back, etc. Don't do that because, and I, I'm not saying you don't, but people, if you're, leaders, you're in the leadership, support leadership. Yes, Stand sir. behind leadership. Amen. Hold up the arms of your leader. Yes, sir. But God said, as we do this, he opens up the windows of heaven. He pours out a blessing. Where you're about to go, God is going to do it because you were faithful. You listened to your leader. Now it's time for growth. Yes. I keep growing and growing and growing. And God is saying he's moving in the church. If the AWC people, God is moving upon you right now, raise your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Jesus. If you're an AWC member, raise your hands where you're at. Say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. that you have stopped by and said and ministered a word that I'm about to be, I'm about to be removed from the one talent yes. to the two talent, to the five talent, to the ten talent. And I'm been ready to do some things that the enemy, that people think I cannot do because I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. God is speaking right now to you. Amen. You that are listening, even by the Shataya. God is speaking. The power of God is moving upon you like it moved on Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning. And this anointing is still being transferred. 
Something's happening to somebody right now. Three people, something is happening to you right now. You can't contain yourself. Go ahead and yell out hallelujah. Go ahead and scream hallelujah. Go ahead, it's okay. Say the spirit of the Lord, it's okay, hallelujah. it's okay. It's okay, it's Thank okay. Because every time you speak hallelujah, it is the highest praise. It unlocks, it unlocks. There are some three people, God is, un just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, and it's going to, hallelujah, it's going to, hallelujah, it's going to unlock some supernatural things in your life. Set the spirit of the Lord. Set the spirit of the Lord. God is moving right now. I can feel the presence of God moving over the, these airwaves, this, this broadcast right now, Pastor Corey. He is moving. Someone is about to get a brand new job. I speak it in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody, God said, run this race with patience. He's going to provide all your needs, but he's going to provide them to build up the body of Christ. See, Pastor, that's the whole thing that people don't understand. If you think that God is going to allow you to be built up where you cannot build up the church or the body of Christ, you're mistaken. Everything, when you, when you solicit God to bless you, to open up doors, make sure you say, Lord, do it so that I can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Open up a door. Show me the way. Give me the knowledge and the wisdom so that I can bless my pastor, so that I can be a blessing to my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, that's how God blesses you. That's how God opens up doors for you. And God is not going to give you no more than I hear you, Lord. God is not going to give you. He just told me to tell you. He's not going to give you no more than you bear. But once you can bear it, he'll give you more. Mm -hmm. And he'll open up more doors. He'll let you see new things. Except the spirit of the Lord. Even in your planting today, plant a seed of faith within this ministry for having me on. I, I, I Listen, I don't get a dime. I didn't take a dime Sunday. I'm not taking a dime now. I want you to understand I'm seeding back into your life. Plant a seed of faith. Plant a seed of faith. A 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99. Plant a seed of faith into this ministry. Given it should be given back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Bible said men will come and give unto you. Did you did you understand that? God will open up doors where men will come to you and offer you things. They will offer you. They will offer you things. But the only way this is going to happen, you got to cause that spiritual ignite. That thing needs to ignite. It needs to start up. But you can do that accepting if you accept the knowledge of God. Don't worry about your child. God's going to take care of that child. They're going to touch that child from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. I hear that spirit of the Lord speaking unto me. Amen expressly. He's going to take care of that. Don't worry about you. Amen, man, your head. God's going to move you from that house or home or apartment and going to put you in your own place. And it ain't going to be grand. It ain't going to be, but it's going to be just enough to get you to, to a place, amen, of seclusion where you can start thinking about the next destination, the yes. next townhouse, the next house. Except the Spirit of the Lord. God is speaking. God is speaking to you. He's speaking. In an unknown tongue. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. We adore you. We adore you. Somebody, I had a testimony today. Amen. And I prophesied to somebody that God was going to remove debt. They went back and checked their credit. They owed a hundred, about $110,000. Uh, came back, checked their credit. It, the only what they owed was $700. Oh, praise God. God spoke that. In one of my broadcasts, he spoke at one of my services. If God said it, you can, you can count on it, people of God. You can count on that God's going to do exactly what he said. He's a God of promise. We ain't playing church. This is real. This is real. We're not perfect. But we're here to tell you what the Lord said. Greater things he's about to do if you would grow up 
and take on these talents. Husbands, grow up. Husbands, grow up so that you can lead your family to the promised land. Grow up. Grow up. Understand your wife. Understand where she's at. Understand where she's trying to go. Come on. Don't judge her. Don't crucify her. Say, honey, look, I want to get, I, I want to be right there on the same level and just a little bit above if I, if, I, if, I, if I can so that we can take this family to the next destination. It's okay. It's okay to know where you're at, but know where you're going. Ignite it. Ignite the change. Ignite where you're going. Said the Spirit of the Lord. He's ministering right now, right now, right now. Even at the ages of 20 to 23, God says, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Be obedient. Flow in the teachings. Said the Spirit of the Lord. Don't try to be like nobody else. Be what God wants you to be. Tick tock. Y'all talking about TikTok? Listen, the only TikTok I'm talking about is TikTok. The time is running out. Be thou changed. Be renewed. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. God is moving right now. Yes. You should raise your hand. You should speak out of your mouth. I'm, I keep growing. I keep growing. I gotta speak. I gotta speak growth because there's power under my tongue. I'm going to keep growing. I'm going to keep succeeding. I'm going to keep being successful. I'm going to keep going from this to another, to another level, to another level. And I do know that when I, as I go to these different levels, every level there is a devil. I preached that about 15 years ago. On every level there is a devil. Every time you try to get to another level, there is a devil who's going to try to stop you and hinder you. But if the devil didn't stop you on the third level, you can go ahead to the fourth level. He might be there, but guess what? He realizes that, amen, I'm still trying and it's still not working. If you look to your left and he's there, you acknowledge him, say, I see you, but my mind is made up, my heart is fixed. I'm talking to five people right now. Don't give up. How do you say you serve the Lord Jesus Christ and you give it up? How, how, how crazy is that? I can do what? All things through Christ Jesus that gives me the knowledge and the wisdom and the strength to do it. Stop playing, stop being religious and just quoting the scripture because you know the scripture and you can say it fluently and you it sounds good to you. Live the scripture, apply the scripture. I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Plant your seed of faith. 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99. You know where you're at. You know where you need to be at. Remember, eights are new beginnings. Sevens are, it's done. Be obedient. Let the Lord lead you and guide you. Plant a seed of faith in AWC tonight. Off the word they've been taught. And then meet me Saturday at 12 noon, DOL's ministry. We're going to we're gonna embrace the gift. We're going to be talking about the gift. We're going to minister on how to meditate. Yes. Meditate. We're going to talk about the gift that God has given you. Hallelujah. We're going to be talking about some things that's going to change your life. Teaching you how to return unto God. We're going to teach you how to turn, return unto God because you never got away from it. We're going to show you how to return. We're going to talk about how you being a, how being a wise man. We're going to tell you how to follow, flow instruction. I'm going to be dropping some stuff in your spirit that's going to change your life. Amen. Cause you to start your business. Cause, start you to amen. Cause you to take your, your business if you're already to another level. We're going to talk about the power of the tongue. We're going to talk about the five-fold ministry with the prophets. How prophets can speak in your life. How apostles can set up the foundation of success in your life. Man, you got to be a part of this broadcast. It's going to be powerful. Know what you have in front of you to help you get, succeed. Stop trying to do this by yourself. All things work together for the good for them that love the Lord. We need each other to get to where we're going. Set the spirit of the Lord. God bless you, Pastor Corey. Thank you for having us with you tonight. We love you all. I know that someone, somewhere, and you should say it. Go ahead and put it in the comments. 
what you receive tonight, even off, off, after the prophecy, after the, um, concerning the prayer. What did God say to you when I prophesied? What did God say to you while I was praying? Can you tell us right now? Can you tell us right now? Can you put it in the comment? What did God say to you from the teaching, from the prophecy, from the prayer? What did God just speak to your spirit? Pastor Corey, I, I need you to make sure somebody says something because yes, through the confession and through speaking it causes an igniting, an, an ignitement, causes things to move. We have to praise God. We have to worship God. We have to confess. We have to testify. These things cause movement. Yes. They cause movement. And we're going to talk about that on Saturday. These things cause things to move. If you All this other stuff causes you to be stagnated. You don't go anywhere. But these things cause movement. Testimony causes movement. Praising God causes movement. It causes things to move. Worshiping God causes things to move. Speaking life causes things to move. Hallelujah. Yes. Put in your comment section. Put in the comment section what you received right now. What did you learn tonight? What did God speak to you? Because God is always speaking to his children. Stop making me feel that like God, stop making your pastor feel that like God ain't speaking to you. He says, my sheep shall know my voice. They shall call upon me and I will answer them. Let us hear what God is speaking to you. Put it in the comment section. Put it in the comment. What did God say to you just now? What, what did he say to encourage you? Because God is a God of encouragement. He's always edifying the body of Christ. And all of this causes movement. When we testify, Bible said we overcome the words of a testimony. That's movement. That's movement. Prayer, praise, worship, all that's movement. Put it, put it in the comments as I leave you. I love you, Pastor Corey. Yes, sir. I'm going to be looking for your comments. When I see it, I'm going to say, Lord, bless that comment in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. They're coming in right now, actually. Hallelujah. What is God saying to you? He said it to me. He said it to you. Now, what is he saying to you? I, I want to start it, too. Um, and I know we're a little bit ahead of when people can hear it. But um, my request to God is to increase my capacity. Yes. I want to grow more. I want to be able to handle more. I love that thing stuck with me when I... I really promise you I didn't even catch the revelation until you said it the man with the five talents yes, left yes. with something more left with something more that's right and so his capacity was just it was perfect it for just it. got increased oh my gosh we knew he could do five now he can do six mm -hmm. I know you could do six and that's gonna give you seven you understand yeah God but, he, but, but one thing Pastor he will not give you no more than you can handle yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so we got to take a look at ourselves, Pastor. We got to say, well, wait, I, you know, you got to, it'll make you feel bad. Yeah, it do. It will. It will. <laughs> it does. And so it's not, all right. So my prayer and my strategy now is how can I make more room for God to give me more? That's, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, but in, in the sense of what you say is, Lord, allow my mind, my heart, mm -hmm. even the dynamics of my body to be able to handle more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you're married. So you got to handle that right with your wife. Right. Because you don't want to leave her out. Right. You don't leave your, leave, leave your son out. Right. You understand? You got to find some way to combine all that together mm -hmm. to get that extra talent. Yes, sir. And that extra, another talent. And then yeah. another talent. We keep growing. That's what the message was. We keep growing mm -hmm. and growing and growing. I want to earn it. Yes. I yes. want to earn it. Yes, sir. So another I'm just comment. kicking that off. Uh, that was my personal little add-in. That was just me kicking it off. But... Um, Let's see. We did get some. Let me go back up. Where did it go? Okay. So Pastor Sierra, she says, uh, my God, Apostle and Pastor Corey, the Lord showed me that I don't have to have the authority to not flow in all gifts, talents he's given me. I've got to flow in order to please him. I don't have the authority to not flow in all gifts, talents he's given me, but I've got to grow. Or I've got to flow in order to please him. So basically... She can't. Said, I, don't, I don't have the authority. Yeah, she, she said, don't have the authority to not. To not flow. That's the key part. That's right. Yeah. That's the Sierra. Yeah. I, I got to flow. Mm -hmm. I got to let God use me. Even if I'm scared, even if I'm afraid, the perfect love of God will cast out all that fear. Mm -hmm. You got to go. Let him use you, Pastor Sierra. Let him use you to the best. And it's for his kingdom. That's you're right. not You're not asking him to use you to make you look good, to put you up on a pedestal, but to enhance or to push the kingdom 
a little bit more. Right. You understand? Right. Excellent comment right there. Uh, it says Miss E-Red, but this is actually my sister, uh, Ursula. She's saying, uh, waiting on Superman to come rescue me from myself. No, I need to rescue me from myself first. There's a, there's, there's a certain thing, Ursula, that's called Superman, but there's also a, th a certain thing called Superwoman. Yeah. And Wonder Woman. Amen. So you can get into the driver's seat and make the change yeah. in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, our sister Dion, she says, I don't have to do it alone. I'm no surrounded. Sir, no I'm surrounded by genuine love, family. Ooh. I'm starting something, Sister Dion. Yeah, she, said, something. she said, I'm going to keep growing and never give up. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, I like this, 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 this sister moved from, um, where did she move from? Oh, uh, Dion, remind, remind us where you moved from. Um, I know she just, yeah, she just came from, uh, I believe, out of state somewhere. She just came from out of state to join this ministry, mm -hmm. to be a part of this ministry. Is, is that not powerful? Is that not? My God. I just, uh, some of y'all in here know that's been a church. I, either I said it during Bible study or I said it on a Sunday service. I just ministered that we are getting ready because we kicked off this series all in the family. And I just, I just spoke it, I believe on Sunday. The Lord has shown me that people are going to start coming in and it's not going to be uncommon for you to hear that people move from out of their state mm -hmm. to come be here right. and be in this place so they can um, they can grow and be in this family. That's right. And I prophesied in this church that God's going to send people from all kinds of directions right. to be a part of this church. And when I said that, I said God's going to bless them for making that decision. So Dion, she should be, she should be shouting right now. Start right. dancing right now. Right. Because God's going to bless her for making that move. Right. For making the move. Right. That's a hard thing. And our average commute for most of the people at our church is over 30 to 45 minutes. What? Our average commute. People are driving over 30 to 45 minutes to come to church on Sundays. That's our average commute. And so she lives in Pasco right now. She's Pasco. uh she's out here, she's out here by us somewhere. So she's about a 30 to 45 minute drive, depending on the day. Um, excellent comment. Thank you for that. Let's see, Nicole Christlike. This is coming from YouTube, so I'm not quite sure who this is. Um, sorry if I'm not quite familiar with who you are. This is the first time I've seen your name. But it says, when I walk in full obedience, things will move. But because of not fully walking in obedience, things are coming up against me. Mm. But you're going to always, listen, you're going to always be attacked by the enemy. The, 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 Pastor, the enemy has a job. Mm -hmm. let's, let's understand that. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can better get through it. You got to understand he has a job. This is a job. He, listen, he, listen, this is what the scripture says. Let me go back to it real quick. Um, John 10 and 10. The thief coming up to, for, to steal yep. and to kill mm -hmm. and to destroy. That's what he, he, he's here for. Yep. He's here to kill, to, 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 to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And life more. And life more abundantly. abundantly. Amen. Yes, sir. Johnny Lewis III, Lord, let us do all things to edify the body. Amen. Peaches says, the Lord speaking to me that I need to show how talented I am because I can do many things. You can do all things, baby, mm -hmm. through Christ Jesus that strengthens you. Yeah. Wonderful. Lady Settle says, if God be for me, who can be against me? I like what, uh, let me say this. I like what Johnny Lewis said. Yes, sir. He said, I want to do things to edify the body. Yes. That's right. Because as I said earlier, everything we do is to edify the body of Christ, us to push the kingdom. You, you understand what I'm saying? You ever went to a carnival and they had these corn machines and you drop a corn in and the other corn falls and then it moves the rest yes, of the sir. corns. Yep. You know, yep. uh, that, you, you got to look at it like that. Everything we do mm -hmm. It's like dropping a coin mm -hmm. to move the rest of the coin. Correct, correct. You understand? Yep. So we, 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 it has to edify, That's it has a to great build example. up the body of the church. That's a great example. Because you got to give yours That's to right. help move the whole. The whole thing. But some of us don't want to give ours, even if we don't get nothing in return. Because of what you said earlier, the spirit of selfishness. It is. You know? Yep. Yep. But what we only what we do for Christ will last. is going to last. That's it. See. So I, the, what I've taken on is a spirit of whatever I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't do it for me. I do it to 
push the body that's of Christ. Right. That's right. Push, push the body of the church. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That, and people say, well, you do this too. You do too much. And you ain't got to do all that. I'm built, I'm pushing the body of the church. Mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So let me let me do what I do. Because right. I know how to get my blessing. Right. I know how to be blessed. But God said he'll take care of me. Yes, you sir. He said, seek you first the kingdom of God all, and all these other things should be added unto you. I know how to get what right. God has for me. Right. You understand? I'm not looking for your recognition or anyone. I'm looking for God to say, well done. Not good and faithful. Man. You've been faithful over a few hours. I'm going to make you rule over these things. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Charlene says, investing, 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 growing, and I'm going. Yes. Uh, Minister Pat, she says, we must allow God's word to be life to us so that we can move from revelation to manifestation. Okay. All right. Miguel says... Got to take accountability for our own actions and our own decisions. All right, Miguel, you better do it. And me and him just had a sit down last week, yes. uh, getting him ready for his his elevation that's um, yes. come forth. So he's preparing for some change himself. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Y'all gonna see a different Miguel. Thank you, Pastor. Listen, thank God for pastors who are taking out the time. Uh, you women pastors, invest in the women. Minister to the women, you brother, men pastor, invest in some of these men. Talk to them. Counsel with the Bible says seek counsel. Yeah. Amen. And remember what we said earlier, pastor. It's easy to minister to the ones who will listen. Right. Use that gift for the ones who don't. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Mother Robinson says keep on growing. My talent, uh, my talents, my talents don't hide from it. Yeah. Keep, uh, keep on growing. Use my talents. Sorry. Use my talents and don't hide from it. That's what yes. she said. All right, let's see who else we got. Uh, Minister Stroll says, in the words of Johnny Lewis, Lord, let me be a kingdom bodybuilder. Let's see if I miss anybody else. Uh, Minister Elect Taylor, she says, I've come so far, there's no way I can give up. I have to keep going and pushing, even when I don't feel I have the strength to carry the load. The Lord showed me I was built for this already he's equipped he's built for this he's already equipped me i have to keep growing Amen. and, and tawana says i've come so far there's no way i can give up i have to keep going mm -hmm. and pushing even when i don't feel i have strength mm -hmm. that's right yeah push you know what i'm saying <laughs> push people push Amen. It's going to take a little sweating. It's going to take a little exhaustion. You're going to be exhausted. You're going to be dehydrated. Listen, but push, push, because the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, right. but it's given to the one who endure. So you got to learn how to endure, but make it your mission. Pastor yes, Corey, do we need to tell the people, make it your mission. Make it the number one priority in your life to push, yeah. to change, to be different. Make it because you're going to change your whole family's life. And when you change your whole family life, Pastor Corey, because you change the, the, the nucleus of your whole family, mm -hmm. then you're going to change the church family. Right. But charity, it all starts in your yeah, own home, home first. Yes, sir. Then it seeks into the church, and then the church changes. Yes, we're, going to see a, we're going to see a powerful change in AWC. Oh, yes. Powerful change. We're seeing it now through the study and the teachings that you all are bringing forth. Amen. We're going to see a change. And we, we, we prophesied about this change. Mm -hmm. We prophesied about this change, how God was going to do it. We ministered to you all about this change, and he is doing it. And so AWC, to stay focused. Yes, sir. And say, I'm, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high call. I'm not, no, we ain't stopping here. We're going to the next level and the next level yes, and sir. the next level. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. That's that's all we got uh, for tonight, Apostle. I think um, that was a lot of a lot of the people that's on uh, gave a comment. That was really good. Um, so God bless you all that received the word and, and testified. And I'm touching it. each one of these comments as they're coming up. Amen. And blessing God for them and praying, anointing them, each one of them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If people have got. Said, oh, oh my! This must be a rich night. I won't be afraid when I go to bed. <laughs> Jessica. Oh yeah, Jessica. Yeah, she she probably uh, she's probably just catching us. She normally catches us when we start. But um, yeah, you want to replay this one, Jessica. This one is really, really, definitely necessary right now. Whatever it's journey, Sunday whatever, morning. wherever you are. Start this from Sunday necessary. morning. Start from Sunday morning. And then go to this Bible study, and then be with me on Saturday at twelve noon. There was ministry. We're going to be talking about the gift. We're going to be talking about I, Pastor Corey. I allowed my gifts 
to allow me to be successful. Yes, sir. The Bible said, physician, heal thyself. Yeah. So I had to use what I had. I went around using my gift for everybody else, helping people. And I was like, wait. I need to help myself Ooh, first. I'm telling you, boy, that conviction there, you know, gets you too. Because I'm like, man, I'm tired of <laughs> helping people. I need to help myself. Right, right. And right. that's what caused people, that's what caused me to be financially blessed. And not only financially, spiritually blessed because I started investing in myself. Mm -hmm. Charity starts right here first. Then it says, physician, heal thyself. Yes, I have to heal myself first before I can begin to go out in the streets and prophesy and pray and lay hands and speak life, amen, uh, to others. Amen. 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 Well, people of God, we definitely want to thank God for Apostle being in with us, sharing a lot of work. And then remember, y'all don't y'all that didn't start with us, remember, Apostle was resting and popped up <laughs> before Bible study. Exactly. Yes, sir. Before we started Bible study, he called me what time does it start and i said we're getting ready to start in 10 minutes so it's set up for you to come on in and he came on in and the lord has given us a word tonight for this journey that we're on right now no matter what walk of life you're on this word will apply so apply this word breathe in this word take in this word sow into this word um you know work this out come on work out your soul salvation this is the time this is the matter the, the kingdom of God is at hand right now, y'all. Yes, yes. the, the, there is no there is no waiting on tomorrow. This is this is a right now situation that it. we're in. So you got to move now. You got to put your hands to the plow and don't look back. Just go ahead and like Apostle said, just push and just trust the process that it's going to be all right and it's going to be all well in God. <laughs> Amen. Let's see what your wife said. No, what she said. Uh, <laughs> oh, she said, come on and move forward. Apostle, come on and move the floor. <laughs> I live in Florida now. Yeah, he, yes, he does. I, I have I have a house here in Florida, so I'm here in Florida, daughter. He does. This is my daughter, y'all. So y'all know she, she's just expressing herself. Right. I live in Florida. I live in Baltimore. I live in um, North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. I'm here every. I'm always. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter, something else. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help. Oh <laughs> I just looked down and saw that. I didn't even see that till now either. <laughs> Amen. Somebody, somebody agreed with her. She got one person who Kitra. Kitra Johnson, you Kitra, you want me to move to Florida? <laughs> you know what? And it's it's amazing too because Apostle uh, Florida wasn't on your travel this week until the family emergency took place. That's right. So we got this word by yeah. uh, the Lord being so kind enough to to allow all this to come to place, yeah. even though there was. Um, a grievance situation, but this still was necessary yes. for the living, for those that uh, needed this word. So we praise God for his ways and his will. And, I, and can I say this? Yes, Almost, sir. Uh, pray for the uh, Pat Porter family. Mm -hmm. um, remember, as you all know, Dr. Porter was coming to our services. Um, the, the funny testimony is she was coming to our services while she was in service. Y'all, and people didn't know this. While we were bringing her to church, she was in service. Uh, in the car mm -hmm. and sometimes she would be saying her what she needed to say or do what she needed to do as being a member of someone else uh, of her church by the time the broadcast was over then she would be in our service oh wow uh, she wow. passed away and uh, and I want us to keep play, praying for her children she has three children two boys and a girl and let's pray for her mother and father they're mm -hmm. still living pray for the family because I want to tell you death and, and, and I tell you, Pastor Corey, this death little pulled on me a little bit, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, this dear sister was precious in the Lord. She has succeeded and was successful in several things. Amen. Uh, but she, she died of cancer. And, um, you know, this pulled on me. You know, I had to say, Lord, you know, come on here now. You know, I, you know as I told you all Sunday, I was thinking, Lord, you take this other person. Why are you taking her, you know? Right. Uh, but I just felt it, it, it got to me, you know. So, um Pray for the Porter family and pray for me. Help me, you know, understand. You know, y'all think, well, the apostle, he, listen, there are things that that that, that bother me. Yes, you know, and death is one of the the things that bother. And I never had to really deal with death. I, I, people didn't die in my church. Mm -hmm. um, I think out of the 40 years that I preached, I've only buried about three people, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, or some two others where it was somebody else asked me. But um, our church is a, our organization is an organization of life. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're, even if you aren't, you know, sick or you should be a part of our ministry, DLS ministry as a uh, covenant part because it will bring life and it'll keep you living in a sense. So I know people think, think that's crazy, but that's just the gift that we have. But pray for this family. Yes, sir. Pray for this family and pray for us that we can also accept and deal with uh, l losing uh, people that, you know, we love and people that 
you know, we felt like she should, should have stayed a little longer. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. We definitely will keep them in prayer. And, um, and um, you know, people of God, this is just letting you know that um, God is on his way. And um, you don't know when your time is going to come. So this is why it's urgent to get this word, to receive this word, and to get yourselves right with, with the Lord. If you don't know him to be your savior, this is the time to um, allow God to um, come into your life and save you. So we praise God for, again, for Apostle. We thank God for the word um, that was established on Sunday. And we're going to take this a little bit further as we uh, continue in our series as well. We're going to go further in that and um, applying that word as well. Um, this Sunday, you'll be hearing from Pastor Sierra this Sunday. Uh, we praise God for her. Yes, Amen. Yes. She's going to preach a dynamic word on this Sunday yes. and uh, bring forth a revelation that we have not heard and seen yet. So we cannot wait. Amen. And uh, we're looking forward to, to gathering with you all. So come on and be with us. And remember, on the last Tuesday of this month, we're going to be in person Bible study at the church. So be there. I want to pack the house on that Tuesday night uh, as we get ready to get ourselves right back into uh, the fit of things where we're going to be in person and doing our Bible studies. But we have a plan and I'm unrolling it slowly. But here, it's time to get back to it. Amen. So you've been spoiled. You've had the COVID season. It's over with. All right, let's get back to that altar. Amen. <laughs> That's why I tell y'all, you've been spoiled. You had three years. I gave you grace. All right. Yes. You had a long time, but this yes. online thing is driving me crazy. Let's get back to the altar yes. where we can touch and feel and yes. express and cry and lean and all this mm -hmm. stuff. So come on. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave you with Apostle. Uh, he's going to close us out. All right. But we thank God for all of you. Thank God for DLWs. Thank God for Altar Worship Center. Thank God for all you family and friends, YouTube, Facebook, all of you that have gathered on here tonight. We thank God for Pastor Rashonda Wells who joined us as well. Pastor uh, 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 Sarika Taylor, God bless you. I think I saw some some other pastors join. I think I saw Pastor Huntley pop in here too as well. So God bless you, Pastor Huntley, and all of you part of the organization. God bless if I didn't get to see you or we didn't call you out uh, sooner. We do love you. We do appreciate you, but. Uh, we're going to conclude tonight and hear from our apostle. So let's praise God as he closes us out. Amen. God bless you, people of God. Just remember, I keep growing. I keep growing and I keep growing. Nothing is going to stunt. Amen. My growth from this day on, I'm going to grow in the Lord and I'm going to be the giant of that particular individual that God has ordained me to be. That's it. I'm done with the discouragement i'm done with uh not succeeding i'm done with negativism i'm done with ho hovering or holding on to old friends that's not causing me to get to my destination i'm done that's it and i'm going to keep growing and growing and growing and there are millionaires out there you all are, there are a lot of people that are millionaires and everybody ain't gonna be a millionaire but most there are some millionaires in our organization and our what's the name and, and and you should snap your hands and say yes that's i know he's talking about me now because guess what when you keep growing and growing god's gonna allow and be the merchant and come back and give you a talent that you're going to be able to use to start your own business to be in business or to connect with the, the merchant or another business partner and guess what once you get all that situated and God wants you to get that situated hallelujah because the reason why God want to bless you and so that you can help us build the kingdom of God. Amen. Feed people, clothe people. Amen. Take care of this and take care of that. So I'm saying to you, as God has spoken to me, amen, you are, you're going to keep growing and growing and growing. And I want to meet you, want you to meet me on Saturday at 12 noon. I'll be ministering again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, we thank God also. I want to thank God for my wife. Um, it is her birthday on Saturday. Um, happy birthday to her. Amen. 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 She'll be 40 blah, 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 years old. Hallelujah. Also, uh, <laughs> that's funny. We, we, we want you to continue to pray for Bishop Williams and Pastor Tanya and uh, Amazing Faith Outreach uh, Experience Ministries. I want you to pray for, amen, and continue to pray for Elevation Ministries, Pastor Melanie and Michael Well, Michael and Mike. Um, I'm sorry, Pastor Mike and Melanie Wells. Amen. I want you to continue to pray for Pastor Huntley Masterpiece Ministries. I want you to continue to pray, amen, for D.L. Wells Ministries. I want you to continue to pray for uh, Prosperous Fruit. Amen. In Orlando, I want you to continue to pray. I'm missing one. Um, 
And of course, AWC, which is the broadcast we're on. Continue to pray and believe God for all of these ministries. Amen. And our headquarter, quarter, headquarter ministry, HBCM, continue to pray that we continue to flow and do what the Lord tells us to do. We're praying. Father, Believe you, we believe you right now for the word of God that you have ministered to you people. We have decreased and you have increased and given us a revelation. We're ready. We're ready. We're at the beginning. We're at the mark. We're ready. Get set. We're ready to go. And we know, God, that you are with us because you said, Lo, I'm with you even unto the ends. And so we know, God, that at the rate, we're going to run this race with patience. And we know that you're going to be right there with us. Amen. As we carry the baton, as we support each other, as we minister to each other. And God, I know you're going to bless your people in the organization. And I ask you to bring us some more churches, bring us some more pastors that will be a part of this organization that we can take this revelational message this not that traditional amen but a revelational message to people are changing people's lives are changing people are seeing a new uh, have a new attitude they're talking different they're seeing different because you have blessed hpcm to be able to bring revelation to god's people not the superficial religious ways but just a revelation amen come from god we bless you we thank you for pastor Corey and sierra singletary continue to bless them continue to open up the windows of heaven you keep just pouring out them a blessing. Let the church know that as they grow, they grow. As they grow, they grow. Let them know, God, that you are doing, amen, abundantly more than we, what we could ask for. We thank you right now. And those who were part of the broadcast tonight, those that were listening and had ears to hear, I speak supernatural blessing. You've given us the authority of being an apostle and an ambassador to speak life to your people. As I use the gift that you gave, I take no credit for it. I speak blessings upon each and every person church you should say i receive it in the name of the lord jesus receive this prophet receive this apostle say i receive him in the name of jesus i receive this pastor i receive i receive i receive as i'm praying you receive the prophecy you receive the knowledge of the word of god you receive amen all the discussion, even some of the comments that have been edifying. Iron sharpening iron. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, it is done. I keep growing and growing and growing. God bless you and amen.